The recording has started, the mute has ended, and once again we're live, but this time in 4K. I fucking <laughs> actually got this shit set up. How long have you been here? Fucking two hours or something? Something like Longer? that. Longer? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You would, think, care, you, know? you would think, and I said this earlier, that I would have prepared after last time I was struggling to scroll through my fucking notes and find the fucking translation, which I found after we weren't live anymore. <laughs> I will have you know, I did have it wrote down, and you might actually be able to see it as I fucking scrambled on screen for it. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, I've got a drink, so I don't give a shit. We're here to talk about Arcane. Yeah. So, uh, for those of you who didn't watch the last fucking episode, how dare you go back and watch <laughs> it now? You must consume every episode in order in full. That is the requirement to watch any of these. Um, so we're doing Arcane. Uh, we, Arcane is broke, for those of you who haven't seen it. Uh, I recommend you watch the first three episodes first. Arcane's kind of broke into three episode chunks, mm -hmm. and it was released as such originally, uh, kind of to like build hype and make it kind of have an episodic kind of vibe to it. I think there was a week di uh, difference, if I'm remembering right. I watched it when it first came out. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't really remember exactly. It's been a while, but. Um, I've seen it more than just that. I've watched the last episode uh, several times now. Um, and uh, there's like chunks of it that you just can't help but relive like <laughs> through like different music videos that uh, have come out and different songs. We'll talk a lot about the fucking audio in here um, in the series, but uh, again, so we're reviewing the first three episodes. I recommend everybody watch the first three episodes if you're watching this live. Haha, <laughs> too late. We're going to spoil those for you. Um, <laughs> but so, uh, I've rewatched the first three episodes this past week. You've watched them for the first time. Right. Yeah. Initial thoughts, just first three episodes opening. What, what yeah. do you want to say? There's a lot to say, okay? For, I loved it. Um, first of all, yes. the animation. We got him. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, let, I'm, me, I'm let, in me, let me go to this screen. Oh, okay, yeah. We I, got him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> completely. Com I, mean, I am absolutely going to watch them all. Mm. Um, first of all, the animation is gorgeous. I mean, yes. it's just absolutely excellent. Not, not only in its like quality, overall quality, but the way in which they use it to build the worlds. Because mm. like the whole, the lanes, the steampunk, like yeah. underground, uh. that is so, it is... Dripping I'm with I'm so glad he fucking liked this show. Because <laughs> you don't know anything about League. No, no. I've, I've thrown League at you, like, once, years ago. Like, yeah. I, I pulled up, like... It's actually funny. I was thinking about this earlier today. I got off work early today and uh, uh, was starting... Oh, my fucking... I'm an idiot. Let me... I'm going to continue to tell the story while I turn these fucking lights on. Jesus Christ. Let me turn <laughs> off these lights and turn on the actual lights we're fucking meant to be using. Um, <laughs> anyways, I uh, was thinking about this earlier today when I got home. We're doing it live, motherfucker. <laughs> um, so we... I had, was showing you, uh, we were just talking about different ways to, like, tell stories in games. Mm -hmm. And different types of, like, world-building things. And we had talked about some of the different, like, world-building um, lore of League. Right. But then we're discussing, like, how they tell stuff in-game. Which League in-game is, like, for anyone who hasn't played it, very, um focused on the gameplay, okay. and not at all okay. about the world, and it's been a while since we've talked about it, so I don't remember how much you remember this, but I remember there's like ways to spam emotes in the game, mm -hmm. and one of the things that was being hinted at at that time was a relationship between Jinx and Vi. Uh, okay. <laughs> Vi has only ever been in the games referred to as Vi. And okay. in fact, it's a joke in the game, like half of her emotes are her spamming. Vi stands for violence. <laughs> Vi stands for Vi. Like she kept saying different things that would start with Vi that are like kind of jokes to her kind of persona and general attitude. And uh, this 
sequence of episodes was the first time it was revealed Violet is her fucking name. Right. And <laughs> in the past shows we've had this too, we definitely have a cheat sheet as well here. I, as a fucking nerd, have them fucking memorized. Yeah, but... oh, I'm way too new to have them memorized. <laughs> um, so one of the interactions uh, that kind of lends itself to the lore of the game, aside from just things they kind of say as they move around, they will generally kind of emote. Lux is mm-hmm. a very kind of good girl, play by the rules, but uh, can't help herself. But she's like very uh, protagonist, mm-hmm. um, very positive, always do the right thing, lawful good. Paragon kind of type, paragon. yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she'll say kind of things that create that vibe. But if you're in a lane with someone you have a lore relationship with, you'll say certain things that hint at that lore, Mm -hmm. and you can kind of pick up on them passively. So we were going over, like, some video clips on YouTube of Jinx and Vi emoting back and forth to each other, Mm -hmm. and how they were hinting at it. And it was very... It wasn't, like, they didn't commit to it in Mm -hmm. any of their writings they had released or any Mm -hmm. videos they had done or cinematics yet. So it was just kind of this thing they were hinting at, and then they themselves yeah. probably were seeding the forums a little bit. Okay, the, oh, right, right, different okay. Tags, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, so obviously now they really went in on that, and capitalized yeah. on them pretty hard. Um, but that is kind of your exposure to League. Me kind of telling you some of the lore stories, and like throwing some random YouTube clip videos about it. Yeah. You know nothing about League outside of what you've seen of Arcane. Oh, pretty much, yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Not enough to give me any, like, more details than what they're giving me. There may be a lot of Easter eggs for somebody like you that I just yes. don't even... There get, definitely you know? is, but right. that's one of the things I'm most interested to hear about. Is so you are you really enjoy the show quite a bit, and you aren't enjoying it because it's like, finally I get to see Jinx and Vi's fucking story. No, nope, This is just all. like, this is a great story, which yeah. I'm fucking well, so glad to hear. It, there's a lot of things that are great about it. One, it capitalizes on a certain element of human interactions in nature that has been with us ever since the dawn of human civilization. Mm-hmm. And it's been a major point, right? And mm-hmm. you see the relationship between the lanes and the, up, and the above city, right? You know, and like, and some of the motivations of the characters are based on this. And anybody that's getting kicked in the teeth oh, is go. going to be resentful about it. You know, and we just have a history, like throughout the world and, th- and throughout time, where if people are getting denigrated enough, pushed down enough, they're going to fight back. You know, and so there's that's a major concept. That's like a theme that's running through the lanes. Like a lot, that's how things kind of get out of control in part. You know, there's a lot of other elements, but like when you look at, say, a piece of history like World War One, yes. I wouldn't say it was because of the shooting of Duke Ferdinand. I mean, yes, that was an inciting event, sure. but many things had to lead up to that to make that the case. As a quick aside, yeah, I heard again recently how convoluted them actually finding him that day was. Yeah, it's nuts. That was so ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe it almost didn't happen, yep. like, four times. <laughs> yep, and the only thing, I would, this is my honest view on it, though, yeah. if they never found him that day and he got off scot-free, something else would happen. Because it was, the powder cakes were all aligned. It would have been something. It wasn't about that. Yeah, it wasn't about that. It may have taken a few more years. It may not have been tomorrow, you know, right. but, but if things stayed... And kept going in the direction of all these like competing interests and and convoluted like uh, alliances that brought other people in. Then, in fact, there was a a, um, a famous like diplomat whose name I can't remember who said basically like the the death knell to the the European power structure, the kings and everything mm-hmm. was going to be some full thing that starts in the Balkans. You know. Yes. You know, right? yeah, for, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. And it's like, well, that was prophetic. Yeah. No <laughs> you know? shit. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, and, and we have some of that kind of going on, though, here as far as, as far as like an underclass that's getting kicked in the teeth. Mm. And that's that's the nature of life in the lanes. And you have I think I like the way they portrayed the above people. They weren't portrayed like they're vile people either. They're like, yeah, they're a little high on their own supply. But usually, you know, places, places like that are that, in the first world tend to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it is very much like this. You know, it's sort of like we are the place of reason and knowledge, and you know, we are the yeah. light. You know, and okay. Yeah, a little arrogant, but at the same time, they they do have an element of the society of people that are deeply into their research, yeah. 
And that's part of how all this got kicked off, too, right? You know, they're deeply into the research. They're serious about extending the realms of human knowledge, you know. And you see that from, boom, Heimerdinger <laughs> and Jace and Victor in, in conflict, you know, there. You know, a <laughs> we, we have uh, the dual monitor yeah. set up here. So as I time out people who are trying to spam chat... Uh, with, like, ads, like, not useful, fun spam. <laughs> and then us referencing the actual chart here. <laughs> it's so, literally a su shining city on a hill. Is yeah, over. yeah, Like, yeah. they actually changed. I think we talked about this previously in preparation. Uh, Zon, originally in the lore, was actually literally underneath Piltover, and Piltover yeah, was on Piltover. top of it. Right. So it was, like, literally they were shitting on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, now it's kind of scaled. Like, you've seen some of the wider shots where you yeah. can kind of see it off in the distance. And it's kind of, again, to your point of, like, they're high on their own supply a little bit, but, like, you kind of want people who are being successful to try to embody... Like, I've had somebody, like, say in jest, like, you know, there are starving children in Africa, so the least we can in, uh, do is enjoy all of the food that we have that they don't. <laughs> like, it's one of those things, like, you want people who are in the first world and have access to all of these resources to do the best with them that they can, to yeah. try to hold themselves up to this high standard. Right. And it's like, a lot of that comes off, as very arrogant and shit. Yeah. But, like, then you've got the people like Heimerdinger who are, like, truly trying to, like, push forward knowledge. Jace, trying to really explore and, like, right. find these opportunities for progress and really espouse these values, not just to have them wrote down somewhere. Right. But to actually fucking embody them when yeah. it is in a case where it's an edge case. And that's the beneficial side of that kind of mentality. When mm -hmm. people actually try to live up to that kind of thing, say, hey, let's make the most out of what we have. Because a lot of times, if I'm looking at things honestly throughout history, yeah. there's at least as much decadence as there is development. <laughs> yeah. yes. That's human nature. I'm like, Rome not is not place, noticed, you know? or known for building all the roads as much as it's known for the fucking public baths and eating yeah, the graves. The, the uh, and vomitoriums? All. I don't know if you yes, know about that. Yes, the vomitoriums, <laughs> very much so, I mean, yes. I think I am friggin' gullen, 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 if I can say, uh, uh, glutton, glutton. I yeah. think I'm a glutton, but I have never needed a vomitorium. It is, I will <laughs> say it is interesting, though, uh, what has lasted from Rome, even though Rome, in a lot of the t buildings and times, for, or, or structures from those times, have been preserved more so than other things because it was iconic of its time. Right. Um... What has lasted and had a lasting impact may have been the roads and the infrastructure things and the empire infrastructure. Mm. Aqueducts, yeah. Didn't matter to Rome necessarily, per se, after its time, but mm -hmm. mattered to the local civilizations that came up after. Right. While it had that as a lasting impact, in its day, it wasn't about its roads, it was about the roads let us tax you so we can yeah. have this opulent everything. Like right. The excess <laughs> was really what it was about. It was called power base, yeah. Yeah. The people didn't necessarily get that, uh, even though it was like this great example of an early democracy. The Senate was very far removed from the plebs. Yes, who yeah, oh, very were a so. different class from the voting Roman class. Like, right, even yeah. then. Oh, without a doubt. You know, I mean, there, how do I put it? There were advancements. And there were, and one of the things I noticed about these ancient society, they do have like famous people that stand out. Mm -hmm. well, I'm thinking of Greeks now, but it doesn't matter. Sure. Th there's famous people that stand out. Most of their societies weren't like these famous people that we know about, like Archimedes or you know Socrates yeah. or whatever, you know. Um, but but these people did, like some of them at least, took actions that maybe some of them weren't even good people. Yeah, some, of them, sure. some of them were. It's hard to look far back like yeah. that and find any of that aren't. Yeah, you can, find, yeah. you can find some real dirt on some, you know, because <laughs> societal values being what they were. But, I mean, they made, like, great advancements. Yes, absolutely. You know, like... like Even uh, in uh, philosophy, like, they... And, yeah. Troubled people can have great, you know, philosophical aspirations. <laughs> yeah, like, right, right. High-minded thoughts. They can yeah. have really good ideas. It's, it's interesting. You can, you can get uh, good ideas from a bad place at times. And, mm -hmm. uh, like, for me, and probably one of the reasons I think about this is in my work... I use uh, the Pythagorean theorem mm -hmm. frequently, mm -hmm. you know, um, and like I, I can't imagine not having it. It would just be, yeah, be, I, it would knock us all backwards, you know. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a power triangle, but anyways, though. So, uh, 
so yeah, so they're, they're, I feel like Jace and Victor and Heimerdinger are all different perspectives around that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's a respect between them as well. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell, like, Victor really comes in to say, hey, I don't, you know, to, to rescue the research and to make sure yes. it's not destroyed, you know. And, and rescue and, Jace by doing so. Yeah, yeah. Res rescue Jace by doing so, and then jump in there with him and saying, you know, and, like, even Jace is like, it's not mine, it's ours now, you yeah. know, which is like... That was such a nice moment. I yeah, didn't get really cool. in the game, uh, like, really any vibes of, like, Victor and Jace having this deep attachment. Like, they are generally from the same region mm -hmm. um, in this, like... I mean, Jace isn't from Piltover proper. He's shown as a kid grow, wandering in this area and then being brought... But that might be something Piltover. in common with Victor, because Victor was from the lanes, right? Yes, and, so and they, they still have this kind of common origin because they're both fairly young and they're at Piltover and making themselves... Right. Like something of themselves yeah. through Piltover system, despite their origins being elsewhere. Right, so they right. they did kind of have the same from Piltover vibe going on, but this level of a deep bond that they shared, like to where Jace would be dead without Victor. Yeah. This was not something I had picked up on at least. Right, and yeah. This was wow. Their story, <laughs> I I will say, it, it intersects with the story of Iron Jinx quite a bit. But, like, it is a separate kind of story being told. Mm -hmm. Man, there is so much development and, like, richness in their tale. Uh, there is. Are they playable characters? Yes. So, oh, I have uh, no idea. So, Victor, Jace, and I don't necessarily want you to look them up because there may be some spoilers. For oh, okay. I, you can just tell me what you tell me. Like, today. Jinx. I mean, right now, you don't really know Jinx is Jinx. You know she's No, but, powder, I, got, but... I got a real feeling about her abilities. <laughs> this is Hawkeye. Pop, 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 you know? I, I think uh, it will be uh, fun for you to look at what the characters do once you see the rest of the series. <laughs> right, and it's like, I, the two things I'm thinking about Jinx is, one, she's going to be mm. a crack shot, and mm. two, she's going to make nasty devices that cause problems for people, like explosions and things like, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it may be other things, too, I don't know, but, like, you know, that's, that, that's a, there may be more there. Mm. But those two things, I, I fully expect to be in the character. And of note, too, I, I guess I was slightly wrong. We also uh, went over uh, Jinx's Get Jinxed music video. Oh, you did, yeah. And sure. Vi's, uh, uh, I guess, her music video at the time. They didn't really do them for all new characters mm -hmm. yet. But, and they still don't for everyone, but um, we usually do some type of cinematic, even if it's shorter. Mm. Um, but for Vi, they did a, a unique song. Um, uh, here comes by. Yeah, okay. And uh, uh, they had like a unique opening screen for her that played on the uh, client for the video game. Mm. Um, so we okay. went over those things. So there is some vibe yeah. that you caught from those of their older states that are what they are playable as yeah. in the game. Although actually, one thing that is different from that music video compared to what I saw from powder or jinx and, and like mm -hmm. we're seeing her as a young child and a very sensitive and kind of introverted to some degree and you know but what i'm seeing in jinx is more like a, a hello joker yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> harley quinn literally yeah, kinda, yeah. yeah yeah kind of a harley quinn vibe yeah i guess what they were going there are for. a lot of development notes where they talk about like yeah harley quinn is mm -hmm. our our inspiration here. We were trying to capture that. And I actually saw there's... I, I will pull it up once once I finish this thought and toss it to you here. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a video I watched recently that compared the Harley Quinn of Suicide Squad mm -hmm. and the Jinx of Arcane. Right. And uh, I, in full disclosure, haven't watched Suicide Squad. Yeah, or at least the second one. I think I might have watched the first one or like I've, watched I part of it. Either. I'm um, not against it. I just haven't. I uh, love the way the characters look, and I kind of like this like more modern emo-ish like edge lord kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. I think there was something there, but the execution is just not good. And yeah, I do a well, lot of was... side by side breakdowns of scenes where they're kind of like, going for, like, a similar kind of, uh, vibe, but, like, the just constant, it's not lowbrow humor, per se, but it's, like, it's not character depth, it's just surface level, like, haha, I'm doing something random, because mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to do it now, versus, like, Jinx is, like, I've seen some shit and become damaged, yeah. so now <laughs> I'm reacting this way, and that's crazy, Yeah. but it's, like, 
there's meaning, and you see it in these first three episodes. Oh. This is <laughs> yeah. why she is Jinx from episode four to nine. Yeah, I mean, they're, all of it is ex- explained well to me at this point. Why she would take on the name Jinx, what her abilities are, yes. what tragedy she's experienced to really give her trauma. You know, I mean, like, it, I don't think people would experience something like that and be normal. You know, like, I don't... You're, yeah, you, no you shit. Not, you, it, I don't know what you'll be, but normal ain't gonna be it. You know? <laughs> so... Uh, I'm gonna toss it to this for just a moment. Uh, shout out to Schnee, <laughs> who is apparently a big channel. I didn't actually realize how many views there are. Yeah, he doesn't need my shout out as a <laughs> Um But this is actually a great video. I recommend people watch this. It is a 25-minute video, so a bit longer form. But if you're, if you're watching a two-hour stream we might go for it who knows you could probably spare 25 minutes um i highly recommend that it's good it uh i don't i try to avoid things that kind of have negative takes on stuff and it obviously has a bit of a negative take on suicide squad but i think the general consensus with that movie was kind of a negative take yeah and it was it was a fun kind of romp through those characters and that world but it's like it wasn't trying to be the Joaquin Phoenix Joker, you right. know, experience. It was just trying to be a fun romp with a really hot revamp of Harley Quinn. Yeah, know? okay. And it's and like, okay, it did that very well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and really, the thing, thing of it is, and this is my approach to the, the movies, like, I have heard nothing but negative as well, but that's yeah. not really what, like, turned me off of it. Um, uh, I will, I don't watch as many movies as I used to, mm. um, but I don't, there are many popular ones I like, mm many popular ones I don't like yeah. and it, it really I'm more assessing whether it fits what I like and what I'm in the mood for yeah absolutely you know because yeah. it's like if I'm in the mood for a really like non-thinking romp that might be so, I, I just turn that on just not to like exactly mm-hmm. what I'm going to get and not worry about it yeah of course how well something is executed always matters you know but, right so I don't know I mean I, I in the right circumstances I could watch it and it's like, this life is like, next time I get on a plane, who knows what I'm going to watch. Right. Because sometimes it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, craptastic choices, you know what I mean? I'll be yeah. flumming through endless choices and just sigh and hit something, you know? Mm-hmm. Either I've seen that already, and or it's lame, but sometimes I've actually seen some excellent things on planes too. It's, it's mm-hmm. happened, but it's it's luck of the draw. Yeah. Rolling, rolling dice. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I've only seen three. Um, yes. It does an excellent job setting everything up. I didn't even know some of these characters were playable characters. Yes, you know? so to carry that thought. So yeah, Victor yeah, and Jace are playable. Uh, Heimerdinger is playable. Oh. Um, there was a lot of speculation about Silco becoming playable oh, okay. uh, throughout these, uh, uh, especially this initial arc, because he seems so prominent. Yeah. Uh, they have a, like... Uh, so Riot releases more than just League of Legends as their games now. They have, like... Oh, okay several other mainline games and different things like they have a net, uh like a game that's kind of like overwatch oh, oh um, okay they have a game that's like uh a spin-off of dota which is kind of funny since league technically is a spin-off of dota to begin with <laughs> a very interesting kind of moment so they have something called team fight tactics and silco was a playable character in that oh, they okay. do like sets and they kind of rotate who's playable mm. um so i think he's not playable anymore but he was playable and quite strong in that. Oh. Um, so, uh, but he's not playable in the main League of Legends game. Uh, <clears throat> Echo's playable, who you haven't fully met yet. Um, slight spoilers there. He might or might not have appeared elsewhere. Oh no, they've named him as Echo already. I thought Little they man. did, yeah. I thought Little Man was Echo. Okay. Yes, yeah. he is Echo. But that's a more grown up version. Yes. Um, uh, Singed, who I don't think has been named yet, but that's not really a spoiler, uh, because yeah, he's kind I of don't. the same guy. Uh, he's playable. I, I, if yeah. you don't know him from the game, it's not really a spoiler that he's singed. Okay. Um, hmm. So that's the thing. Um, Caitlyn is playable, um, who is like the, uh, Jace's friend. His house it, that was sponsoring him. Yeah, she's the she's, daughter. I remember of that her briefly. House. There. Okay, I didn't remember her name. She becomes a more major character as it goes on. Okay. Um, but so she's playable as well. Um, yeah. So about. Uh, Vander, this is an Easter egg that hasn't really been explored in the series, but is uh, hinted at very heavily if you're looking for it. Mm. Vander is a playable character under another name who you wouldn't recognize if you didn't watch Arcane. Oh, okay. So there's some interesting things that happen with him, and 
we can jump right actually segueing like a oh. master class here into what fucking happened to Vander. So it had been a while since I'd watched the third episode. I've watched a lot of uh, the, I've tried to show it to two other people and by episode two they did or didn't pick it up on their own. Hmm. Uh, so it had actually faded from my memory exactly how it went down with Soko and Vander. Oh, and, okay. uh, so Jinx with her monkey bomb blows up Milo and yeah. uh, the bigger guy. Oh, I don't remember his name. Shoot. I can't Big believe guy. he's not listed. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> the character I related to. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, so both of them are actually like the final nail in their coffin really is from the monkey bomb. Um, Vi mm, and Vander yeah. actually could have survived even despite the monkey bomb. Vander made a choice. Mm. I had actually kind of forgotten the choice Vander made to go back. To, like, get this opportunity for Vi to get out and sacrifice himself, and that was the last moment. It actually right. kind of left me for a minute there, and... Man, that was powerful to rewatch. Yeah, holy shit! Yeah, it was really, and well, yeah, it really was. It, 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 there's more I can say, but I want to let you finish where you're going with all of this. No, no, oh, okay. Well, it's like okay, so I look at like the uh, the level of reacting to blame, and I know everybody's different. Mm -hmm. So you, you like Vi can be all kinds of angry with Jinx about doing this. That doesn't hit me. Mm -hmm. And I and, and I could see I can sympathize with a with especially an adolescent taking that perspective, but yeah. it, from my position, if somebody's not trying to hurt me, like it's like say somebody else kidnapped me, kidnapped my family, and somebody mm -hmm. tried to help me, but wound up killing part of my family, right. I would be super pissed at my kidnappers, you know, and I wouldn't I would be in in a tragic state, you know, I'm sure I'd be I would be unconsolable. Right, inconsolable. Mm -hmm. But, but I don't think to blame somebody that was trying to rescue me, even if they fucked it up. Yeah, you know, because like this. Once you have happened. all that context. Yeah. Yeah. But, and it's like, so I would be. Uh, my anger would have been focused at. Um, uh, Silco. Thank you, yeah. Silco. Yeah, my anger would have been focused at Silco and his goons. You know. The moment where. So Jinx has done the monkey bomb, and mm. been blown off the fucking side of the building. Yeah. <laughs> and it's largely okay. All right, that's we're going to flip that aside for a moment. Um, so she encounters Vi on the ground where Vander um, is laying. Yeah, yeah. And she's like not fully digested what the consequences of her actions are because she was blown off the fucking building. Sure. Um, <laughs> so she hasn't seen what's happened to her, uh, her, their friends and she hasn't probably processed that that's Vander there because he's been like warped by the shimmer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And the sense. only thing she recognizes is Vi. And she's like, Vi, my monkey balls are She's like excited and happy. Like despite being physically hurt by the explosion she hasn't been traumatized at all she's like this is like her pinnacle moment of what powder could be right like she's finally had this breakthrough she's finally successful it was through her own cleverness of putting together what happened with the crystal mm -hmm. in jace's room and then devising this clever monkey bomb that yeah. also had two more inside of yeah, it. So right. it, it was, yeah, right. It was fun. Yeah, no. Like, um, remember when you saw it from far away and you saw the magical like cloud above, you know, like the streak above. Yeah. There was a shot where it was very panned away and people yeah. were looking at it from far away, like oh. And I really <laughs> like how during like, the explosion cool. too, it actually like it has the initial explosion, but then it like follows the other two before they finally explode. Right. That was kind of a cool moment. There's. Um, you can go back and see how many of those crystals she took from Jace's room, mm -hmm. and they're actually all accounted for in the series, which is oh, a bit of a I never spoiler. thought you, were, you know, compared to that. Before. It's something that I had just uh, in rewatching this thought about when I saw that moment. I was like, "Oh shit!" And I started to count, and I was like, "Ah ha ha! I know exactly where they all are." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and man, each one of them is at it as as impactful of a moment as this, though not necessarily in the same way. Right. Okay, They're yeah. very, very huh. powerful moments. I want to do a brief aside again to shout out someone else who doesn't need me to shout them out. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, Georgia Dow. 
she's great. She does uh, tons of different, uh, like, content around, like, gaming and uh, media. Um, so, Last of Us, that's not surprising. Um, Wednesday, also not surprising. Um, did you watch Wednesday? No, I haven't yet. It's good. You'll like it. Um, but so she did a bunch of stuff, Chainsaw Man, Cyberpunk. Oh, um, right she did yeah. stuff on Arcane, too, where she she's a therapist by trade. Oh, okay. And she analyzes, like, things that happen to characters in a show hmm. and, like, how they react and, like, certain dynamics between characters. That is interesting. Right? It's yeah. very <laughs> cool. So she did a lot uh, about, like, the father-daughter relationship that uh, starts to form between Jinx and Silco. Oh, um, right. A bit of right. a spoiler, but you kind of get the no, vibe. No, I got it. Yeah, yeah I definitely got the like, vibe of okay, that. Okay, yeah. Silco's going to take Jinx into his arms. That's, that and, really like, seemed like it, yeah. I I want to hear your thoughts on this the that moment too of like well well actually Pi tries to reach out but she can't right and so Powder's just in this moment of like she's gone she's abandoned and here yeah. Silco is taking her in uh, yeah and not <laughs> thoughts and, yeah and well the thing of it is like <laughs> well it's kind of fucked because at least to, to this point um, okay I'll start with the good part or the I'll say at least the understandable part Silco. Mm-hmm seems to be animated by how how just demonstrably unfair everything is for people in yes. his area. I sympathize with that. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, like, like if that's your motivating factor, that's been the motivating factor for some of the the most famous, like, uh, human rights activists in history, Martin Luther King Jr., Absolutely. Mahatma Gandhi, you know, so that motivating factor is good. Mm-hmm. But there's just certain things I'm not willing to do in the name of this. And I'm not willing, personally, to kidnap innocent people. Yeah. You know? So, he, he loses me there. It's like, it's, at the very very least, it's screwed up. He's He leans, he uses some pretty smarmy scumbags towards the beginning, those kids, you know? And they're like, yeah. and he leans on them kind of hard, too. Mm-hmm. You know, which is a little, uh, I don't know, they're, they're scumbags, probably shouldn't use them. Um, I don't lean any harder on kids than I'd have to. I don't. I don't. I don't do physical discipline or anything like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm just not. You know, like you'll lose your video games and computer and, and no dessert for you is kind of. <laughs> no Minecraft is the hardest yeah. punishment. Yeah, all. probably yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, but but looking at it, his a lot of his means may be somewhat uncomfortable. The way yes. he goes about things, his methods, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then. This, the, the kidnapping was kind of like just adding to that. I'm like, look, it, yeah. I'm not, I don't like the character at this point. Now, I could change, you know, characters have arcs. They change their behavior. They mm-hmm. take different approaches. Well, I don't know what the next nine episodes, uh, sorry, six, six, six more? Six, yeah. I don't know, total. yeah. I don't know what six episodes are going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I could hate it more. I don't know, I don't know, right? I'm open-minded. Sure. But, but what I'm thinking, though, is we're setting up, like, tragedy here because mm-hmm. Soko takes in what powder jinx you know mm. whatever and that's gonna put like a big divide <laughs> the artist formerly known as powder yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna put up a major divide between her and and vi because vi after seeing all that it's like yeah. guess who just killed your father figure maybe not the biological father by the yeah. sounds of it but the man who loved you and took care of you right mm-hmm. you just saw this man and his actions were i mean if, if you especially if you have time to think about it later yes then you probably would blame Powder a hell of a lot less, and you oh, and you, absolutely. you would blame. I mean, she's a kid. Yeah. She's trying. She's she's a poor kid from the slums, who's accustomed to having to fight, mm-hmm. and has been taught to fight by her family. Yeah, and and like steal and all this stuff to get by. Circumstances aside, yeah, just yeah. for context, and here she is doing all of that. And finally having the kind of impact she's been trying to have for years. Yeah, right. And yeah, it's I like, so. I mean, you can't, it's it's similar to the talk about with Silco, the motivations. Yeah. I, I don't have an issue with the motivations, but I think there may be mistakes being made with how you're trying to achieve those ends. Yeah, that I see that, and the thing about... The Silco and Jinx are a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Silco's a little bit more unforgivable <laughs> than Jinx's. Yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little absolutely, bit more. yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that that goes down to motivations and, like, what you're willing to do. Because yes. when you're looking at what people are willing to do, mm-hmm. and their methods, right, mm-hmm. 
that tells you a lot about how you would expect them to act in the future. Yeah. Right? So, like, Powder, I'm calling her Powder, but I'll probably be calling her Jinx in the future. Because yeah. she was still Powder at that point. Yes. Powder was trying to help. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out, but she was trying to help. And that's important. Mm -hmm. That's a person that you would expect, barring all the trauma, yeah. to live a life where, oh, she will help in the future, or try to help in the future. Yes. Yeah, and who she has us? so much to offer. She's yeah. like the this uh, Zon equivalent of Jace. Like she's trying oh, to right. discover yeah, this to technology. This. She's trying to build things. Like I guess grenades don't exist, or she can't get her hands on one and can't reverse engineer it. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to invent something yeah. that doesn't exist. She seems like a grand inventor slash engineer, in yes. my opinion. And Jace is like an inventor slash scientist. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's overlap there. Yeah, Inventive. I like that. He's more of a scientist and she's more of an engineer kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah you know, well, that. well, it's like, you know how you see the movies where it's like a painful death ray, like big laser or something like that, mm. and it's, I'm a mad scientist? You're not a mad scientist. You're a mad engineer. <laughs> you <know? Yeah>. So, <laughs> the scientist did the research to make this possible. You're you know? figuring out how to fire the thing. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're building an actual practical thing that has to work, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, <laughs> you're, doing all, you're doing all the tech end of it, you know what I mean? That kind of, yeah. thing, right? And nothing against scientists. I love them, oh, you yeah. know, you know, and by the way, it'd be hard for engineers to be very effective without science, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's... But that said, uh, yeah, so, so going back to, to this, like, that leads me, I, I, now I think I'm going to see a very different jinx than a powder, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I'm going to think. But well, up to this point, uh, oh, yeah, I, don't, no, yeah, I, yeah. I, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't know. There's nuance there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but up to this point, I wouldn't, you know, like, we have a society that's very punitive. Yeah. But for me, if I was in the judge's chair and something like this happened where a little girl tries to rescue her family with explosives yeah. and somebody gets killed. It's like, well, they were kidnapped and she was trying to rescue them. Right. I'm not sending you to prison. I'm not, you know, no. like, I think I need to talk to you. Like we need to, Community yeah, service. It's, yeah, it's going to be like, I would sentence her to time with a therapist and to, yes. to and, and some guidance to not, you know, like explosives has consequences and, right. you know, and we don't hate you, you know, you, right. you were trying to help, but explosives have consequences and we need you to understand that. You know what I mean? Like right. that's way more like, uh, how do I put it? There's three things that we can concentrate on that I'm aware of the three big pillars, right? Mm -hmm. And there's recidivism, restitution and revenge yeah. and fuck revenge. Yeah. Recidivism. We don't, I don't want her to use bombs again. Right. Okay. So let's edu Absolutely. let's educate her. Let's let's get her in sort of like a program. Well, I do disagree. I main jinx quite a bit. Oh, so no, no. I, I do. I do want her to use some explosives. But as a child, yeah. yes. I don't, uh, jinx can powder. Yes. Powder. powder. I don't. I don't want, want, I don't want powder yeah. to use explosives. <laughs> and but then also, you know, uh, there is restitution, like bringing people back to whole as much as you possibly can. Right. 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 Well, I wouldn't really be hammering her with that because she was in dire what straits. Can you do? Yeah. What yeah. can you do? Right. She did the best she could. Now, taking somebody else like, like, oh, uh, Silco. Yes. <laughs> Silco. Uh, yeah, no, Silco I, could be um, punished a little bit more hard. Yeah. You are going to get some agreement with me out of that. Yeah. Much, to yeah, to our like, last video with Maji Record about me always trying to, like, root for the villain. Mm -hmm. Like, I do that hard for Silco, and you will appreciate why in the yeah, coming six episodes, but, like... I, you and well, me, I will agree, you could probably sentence Silco a lot more stringently yeah, well, it's than like, you okay, could <laughs> You're running a gang of street thugs that are kids, uh, that's pretty fucked up, um, yeah. and you kidnap some people, you right. kidnap some kids, right? and you sent, like, goons after them to beat the, okay, yeah. you are not going to be, you're too dangerous and to the let you And the kid he pressured you know? to take like, Shimmer as the experiment. As Very the literal point. next step after the lab rat. Dude, yeah. <laughs> One I, step away from being the literal lab rat. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I can't, <laughs> to this point, like, he could have a redemption arc or something, but I, I, I'm open to that. But, it, it, but it's, it, it, to this kind point, it's like, I'm, I'm judging him pretty harshly at this point, you know. Mm -hmm. To me, he's really, I'm not saying he's uh, uh, an uncomplex person because he has interesting motivations, mm -hmm. but he's on the villainous side of things to me in the, as the opening score. Um, yes. At the same point in time, and this is just my view of society too, mm -hmm. like when you have an asymmetrical amount of power, 
Yes. Um, it's on the moral duties on the powerful to be lenient with the powerless. Yes, absolutely. You know? So what we see and how they use enforcers and how those enforcers are basically like oh yes. Nazis. Let's talk about the fucking enforcers. <clears throat> yeah, it's too. like, dude, yes. I, I, if I was living in the lanes, I would be pissed seeing this, right? Yeah. And I'd be, I'd be angry. And if, I admit that even if Viva I, Lausanne. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> I, I, even at my old ass age, I'd be like, God, I'm not much of a fighter anymore. But you know, uh, realistically, if I was in the lanes, right, and this mm. was happening, and people were getting pissed and ready to fight back, I'd be like, I, I can make weapons for you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not a great fighter anymore, but I, you know. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I can, I can do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, here's what I can do. Uh, I, ha I know basic science, I'm an engineer, and I can make things go boom. That's right. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I would be really pissed, Yeah. you know, and I would want to stop that shit, and I want to punch them right back. Yeah. It's human nature. Not only that, but it's like seeing people around me get bullied and beat up. You know, like innocent you know, people, right? Because yeah. they just they, and they're after. So, oh, are you after some important material? And that right. material is more important than our human dignity. Right. Like, no, they're they're villains too to me. You yeah. know, they suck. You know, I really uh, like how much. So the enforcers are not uh, as heavily emphasized as they could have been, given where some of the characters go and ultimately wind up in the game. I will say. Um, the enforcers are allowed to be treated as a very, like, we see a nail everywhere kind of group, which I really liked, because putting aside what, what real-world, you know, comparisons, <laughs> um, putting, putting that group, aside from these, like, couple of people who are at the head of it, obviously the main head of the Enforcers dies in the first three episodes. Right, and she had some redeeming Torn characteristics. To shred, yeah, she was brutally That killed. was sick. That I was really shocking. liked how much yeah. they didn't give a fuck about those people's yeah. lives. Yeah, and they really did. so yeah. destroyed, eviscerated, like, yeah. great. Oh, yeah, they kill, my, kill my characters that I love. I yeah. love. <laughs> um, well, and actually, it's funny, even though she was Enforcer, I mm -hmm. found redeeming characteristics. Well, she was making it work. Yeah. She actually lived on the ground and was willing to try to find a way to maintain peace, very much the way that Vander did. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I think both of them understand how horrible the war could be, right? Yes. And so they're, like, working within the systems uh, they're in to try to avert violence. It's know? one of those things where <clears throat> peacetime, uh, uh, what, how does the saying go? Peace breeds soft men. Soft <laughs> men breed, uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this, but there's a, there's a three-phase cycle of war makes people tough, and tough people make sure there's peace, and then peace makes people soft. And then soft people lead to war. <laughs> so it's one of those oh, things yeah. where you're seeing like these, the this head of the enforcers who's seen a p previous war that we saw in the very first opening of the first episode, and Vander, the de facto head of the lanes, right? That's seen the war, and they both oh, have not just been forged by that in steel, but have been honed by that experience to know how brutal it is. And how steep the price is, even if they won. Right. And to know it's not worth it. Yeah, he, I mean, Vander makes very good points about who are you willing to lose. Yes. You know? Oh, that conversation yeah. with Vlad hit me so hard. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I think that's the questions that really should be had. And, well, I do see another, it's a bit of a, an aside, mm -hmm. but in all honesty, I see one of the driving factors for war is something more systemic. Mm -hmm. And that is when you have mighty empires that are be able to to prosecute a war yeah. and not have to feel too much discomfort over it, yeah. they readily do it. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't say it's because they're soft either. I'd say it's because they're greedy and self-interested mm -hmm. and they don't mind throwing a few lives away of their citizens yeah. and they certainly don't mind killing the foreign people. Right. You know, they, they may not, might not even see as human. Yeah. So that's like, that's, that's me seeing a driving factor. Right. And I would expect in a place like, not the lanes, what's the other place called again? Pulled over. Pulled over, thank you. Yeah. I would expect pulled over would have some Pilt. people... Pilt over. Pilt, pilt, pilt yes. over, pilt over. Uh, Not that it matters, but I, yeah. <laughs> I would expect, like, pilt over had that, that, you know, enforcer woman that was working towards peace that I mm. respect, and then I would expect them to have other leaders that are more of the, the mold that I'm thinking of, like, yeah. well, we might lose a few enforcers. Like the council. Yeah, some of the council. all were like, nope, turn yeah. the underground upside down. It's like, yeah. 
Some of the chemicals seem worse than others, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like totally that. That's like f all. I'm sorry. It's just like. Uh, yeah. uh, and, oh, and, we can swear here. Fuck yeah. Fuck all. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> it's like shit, man. I mean, yeah. it, there is a real problem, and this is a hierarchical problem. I'm getting all philosophical about it, but sure. the more removed somebody is from the consequences of their actions, the more freely they are to fuck things up for other people. Yeah. You know, and that's Absolutely. once you once you get a hierarchy that's built longer, bigger, bigger to an ivory tower that you've made. Right. You have people at the top. They're like, well, looks like some people are gonna die. Pieces right. on a chessboard. Numbers well, on a sheet. And you know? literally in this situation in Builds Over 2 where they have this council where, like, everybody comes in and is quiet and they dim the lights on everybody and only cast light on the people who are talking. Right. Like, we can't even see you if you're not being recognized by the council. Like, <laughs> yeah. the symbology of that is, like, you guys are so fucking far removed you can't <laughs> even see the people in your courtroom. Right. Like, <laughs> not you don't have a jury and you are the jury. Like... You won't even look at the people. You don't absolutely yeah. have to let talk. Yeah, really, and it's ridiculous. In fact, they're yeah. not even that. They're even kind of shitty to their own people that are at lower levels. Like, yeah. like the mother of uh, Vander, or not Vander, uh, the mother of Jace speaks up yes. to you know. It's like I know I'm not from a famous house. You know? Right, like, self denigrates. She's like yeah. internalized yeah. the fucking classism that she's at the losing end of. Right. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, oh, well, this is a bunch of bullshit. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's. And so I think these these societal structures make war entirely too easy, and I yeah. see that happening in my lifetime, and yeah. it's and it's a terrifying thing. And I think the only way we're ever going to get truly past it, and now I'm going on a soapbox. Look, I'm happy to be wrong Welcome. and have th have things be improved by other methods, and yeah. just, that's great. That's more important. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we can truly get safe from this kind of result without some limitation to hierarchy. And I'm not saying I know exactly where that is or how that has to happen, right. you know, but I, I think ivory towers and truly untouchable people yeah. is a problem, you yeah. know, whether it's a king or, or a, a president or anything else, yeah. you know, and boy. <laughs> well, and to your point, the, the way to bring in a real world analogy without making this political, which is a rare window I have, <laughs> um, the way they approach this conflict at the council is as if it was going to be us invading Afghanistan. Yeah, right. And the yeah, way yeah, it yeah. feels like it would play out is Russia invading Ukraine. Yep. Like, yep. you might win, <laughs> but what is going to fucking happen? Or it might turn like, out, it might turn out like America invading Afghanistan. 20, well, yeah, 20, 20, years 20 years later, years later you lose anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, maybe. It's like, who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> yeah, right. So it's like, the enforcers are like, the, the, you mm. see very few enforcers unmasked, and I also really like that aesthetic too. Because yeah. it gives you the idea, like, you can just carte blanche these people. They are a unit. Like, okay, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like that expression, the biggest gang in America is the, the police. cops. Yeah. yeah. Like, they, they're all uniformed the exact same way you can't even see their face. The only ones who are unmasked mm. are the two we've seen unmasked so far. Right. And one of them's already dead. So yep. there's only one person who matters in the Enforcers, really. Yeah. Aside from that, they're like an effective monolith. Although, he, to me, he was a corrupt prick move kind of a guy that led to the deaths, right? You know? He, you know? He didn't want it to happen, but still, what an idiot. So, you know? just, just from these first three episodes, he had a really interesting arc already of, like, clearly was willing to do more things to try to advance himself. But when he saw what entangling himself with people of, and again, here's me talking against Silco, yeah. Silco's yeah. <laughs> stature, um, <clears throat> when it actually shakes out, the naivete kind of shone through if he like, oh, I thought there was honor amongst thieves. <laughs> there is no honor okay, amongst yeah, thieves. Yeah. And like, but now it's too late. Like, the, the, the harsh lesson was so harsh that like, you are paying dearly for this one. Like, you're yeah, a chief but... who you respected and looked up to. And, like, she talked now. Like, he got in, like, everybody's face and was like, you're going to tell me where these kids are? I don't care about... And she's like, out. And he's like, like yes, ma'am. <laughs> fucking out. <laughs> like, to lose someone that you look up to that much, and has probably mentored him for years. Like, we don't really yeah. know the backstory on that. Sure. Clearly, there's some type of dynamic where she's guiding him and actively training him for her position and, one day. And he does have the, kind of like, the saving grace of having remorse. Yes. After the fact, Absolutely. like, the money's just on the ground. He's like, you know, whatever, I don't care about. 
you know. And, I mean, that doesn't really, at that point, just take the fucking money. Yeah, I guess. But, but yeah. like, uh, like, <clears throat> it's so painful. Like, what what are you supposed to do in that situation? What It's already, it's so instantaneous that before you, literally before you could realize what had happened, the mistake's set in stone. Right. So what do you do? Like, you thought you were just going to get a little coin on the side here. Everybody likes a little coin on yeah, the right, side, yeah. <laughs> but not at the price of blood, and right. you wouldn't have made that deal. But he just didn't know that, of course that's going to be the deal if you're dealing with someone like Silco, who's trying to run the fucking underground, and is willing right. to do these things so, that you alluded so to earlier. So it looked corrupt to me, but not to the level of those consequences. You know right. I mean, like, shocking. so, shocking. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't, like, I agree, I don't think he would have been in, no, he wouldn't have done that. But now yeah. he's someone who's done that. Yeah, but now he's someone that's So what will happen? Yeah, no, no, that's a very no. good question, right? <laughs> what do you think about the final scene where he's, uh, like, I don't know, chloroforming Vi, whatever the fuck was on that rag, but oh, okay. he kind of grabs Vi. Um, so what he says to, in effect, is, um, you can't go out there if they see you, they'll kill you. Mm. So he's trying to, like, save Vi from this situation. Um I don't know if he's assuming Powder's already as good as dead or whatever, oh, but he's God. been able to process the situation enough to realize, okay, Vander, or Vi has some attachment to Vander, she's gotten out of view, these people have walked into view, if this kid goes back out, she's done. I gotta yeah. save her. Right. So there's, like, this moment that's not really emphasized, but it's, like, mm, this yeah, okay. kind of building as well on this, like, redemption for him. Mm. I, I'm not going to say where he goes from here, but, like, what? how did that hit you as kind of the last moment in the three-episode arc? Uh, you know, it, it it's important for building the character, and it might be enough reason for me to not entirely hate him. Mm. In fact, I think the word I used and I initially described him was idiot. You know, <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> like, like, what he did was, you know, dumb, naive, I think you said, right? That's mm -hmm. fine. Naive might be a kinder assessment yeah you know you're probably a bit stupid though <laughs> so yeah stupid but but i but i don't feel evil yeah exactly he did but what makes it's funny. you definitely get the evil vibe from Silco. yeah oh yeah yeah but Do, i don't get the evil vibe from him yeah but i i didn't like him earlier though like he shows remorse for the death of the you know uh, of his I, for, I forget her name but his you know chief right yeah. whatever and he shows remorse over that so it's he's not like pure evil, mm. but there, there. But the reason why another reason I didn't like him is he was leaning way too hard on people. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I how hard I will lean on somebody has everything to do with the motivations and consequences and like 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 I <clears throat> there's something called the Phoenix model of firefighting, right? Mm -hmm. Where you risk a little to save a little, you risk a lot to save a lot, you risk nothing to save nothing. Yeah, you know I think I've said it before, but is what yeah. it really means is like uh, I'll risk a little to save a burning building. Yeah. I'll risk a lot to save human life, mm -hmm. and I'll risk nothing to save like a dead body. I'm sorry, they're dead. You know, yeah. like we're not going to risk something. You know, if they're outside of the building, next to the building, yeah, we'll move them away from the building. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Inside, yeah, no, but they're no dead. Risk, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's like, yeah, there's been situations like that where leaders at positions of heads say they're dead. You right. know, and I'm not going to lose my firefighters in there. Right. You know, trying to recover bodies. Right. Right. So I mean, like that's that's really fucked, but. It's the best moral decision I you could can make, very easily you know? see how someone would be like, they're in there, get them. It's like, no, they're dead. Yeah. You need to understand that and not be mad at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, and sometimes people can't handle that, right? But, right. But as far as, like, me, like, Eric, imagine I'm a cop or something. Okay, yeah. we're going to send you into this city or send you in this area, and we really need you to get information. Okay, yeah. why? What's up? Uh, we have some stolen artifacts. Right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But there's only so far I'm going for that. You know, right. whereas that's if, such a good point. You yeah. know, if you if, if you tell me, it's bobbles. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, even if it's really important, sure. right? But let's say they 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 take a, a different tack and say, okay, Eric, uh, we need you to find this man. He's kidnapped several kids, and we'll believe we'll be dead by tomorrow. Right, it's a whole different game. Um, you might not like me very much. <laughs> you know, if I think somebody knows. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm sorry, the but they're like, turning the underground upside yeah. down like it's that. Yeah, yeah. And in but, the meantime, that really happens, yeah. and they're completely oblivious to it. Don't care. Don't help. Well, yeah. not only that, but like <laughs> they're turning the underground up upside down like it's that, right? They're doing it for items yeah. and hurting people 
and escalating the possibility of violence doing it. Yeah, to make right? a point. To, to make let a point. Them know who's yeah. in charge around. Yeah, here. to make a point who's who's in charge, and also, oh, we do want to get that stuff back too, right? Right. And it's like, well, it's like that's the excuse. Well, that's the excuse, right? Yeah. But yeah, they want to also. You're right. They want to establish that you know power relationship, and yeah. and so like those motivations suck. Yeah. You know, I, I'm on, and the, how I really feel about it is that somebody could do something. This might sound strange, but this is really how I feel. Somebody could do something violent to me over a deep misunderstanding, and yeah. I would have trouble being, you know, hating them for it. If right. they really thought the wrong thing and they had good reason to. Right. You know what I mean? If they thought that I had their kid or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, you know, but give me a chance. I don't. <laughs> yeah, right. But, but, you know, but I could really understand how somebody could have that kind of mistake. You know, and it'd be like, well, my nose is broken. Eh, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. No, I totally get that. You know, yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At yeah, least it's straightened out now. Uh, <laughs> they broke uh, it in the opposite uh, way. Actually, it's funny. <laughs> it broke kind of straight where it was longer. And <laughs> I'll tell you a story about this. I was talking about this the other day to somebody. It was longer, and the septum or whatever, the cartilage broke and went overlap like that right <laughs> and there was this this uh girl high school girl that had a real crush on me we never had anything till later but remember what she told me about this <laughs> she told me that if i ever going to marry a woman that i have to tell her about my nose because the possibility of a baby having the long ass philip nose you know <laughs> it's like i had a nose job for free because i have a shorter <laughs> nose now you know, my family oh my is God. like, yeah, it's not a short <laughs> nose either, right? But it, my family has beaks. You know, like it was like a Phillips nose is just, you know, it's it's, it's bird of prey. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, so it's kind of it, it's it, it's it is a little bit crooked, <laughs> but screw it, it's, it's kind of straight. <laughs> not really. Not. Mm. Anyways, though, uh, so yeah, I mean, so there's some complexity in the characters. I'll see other motivations develop, you yeah. know, if nothing else, like something I've seen a lot in Japanese storytelling mm. is complex, developed and mm, varied story arcs. Mm -hmm. So you get some people that you might not like mm -hmm. that change. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, you also get like, even this is actually something funny. Like, um, I don't know if you ever watched any Spider-Man stuff at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know J. Jonah Jameson? Mm, he's yeah. like he's like the really <laughs> out uh really uh loud and aggressive uh editor in chief of the Daily Oh Eagles. yes, absolutely. Okay. So total jackass, right? But they had a, a story about like why does he hate uh the heroes in masks, mm. right? Well, they have a story about it in the comic books that I've never seen in the movies. Mm. So, I thought he was an asshole. Just flat out in the, in the comic books. He's always giving Peter Parker a hard time. Yeah. And he's always, you know, Spider-Man, criminal or menace, you know, like all this right. stuff, right? And it's like, it's like, God, he's such a jerk. When he was young, he was a journalist. His beat was in the South. Mm -hmm. He was trying to uncover the KKK. <laughs> oh, shit. So he hates people in masks. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, he is like... Come out of the mask, you coward! You know, like <laughs> wow! I did not know that. That is very interesting. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's some crazy shit I've seen yeah. just on like, uh, just in like feeds, like of like clips from actual comic books that have been released of like these iconic moments mm -hmm. uh, for people who have followed the series for a really long time. And it's like, yeah, that was holy great. shit! Those characters are related in that way. Yeah, like yeah. there's some moments <laughs> like that where it's just like. Man. <laughs> and that was my feeling when That's I read nuts. it, because I read Spider-Man for years, yeah. and then I read, like, a flashback one to J. Jonah Jameson's early, like, in his 20s or something, you know? Yeah. And he's a courageous, principled journalist fighting for justice in the South to uncover the KKK wow. and stop them. You know? Holy <laughs> fuck, holy. Wow. You know? That and adds a lot of depth to his it, motivation. Yeah, holy it's shit. like, well, it's like, I do want him to back off Spider-Man, but, like, I totally respect, yeah. and I get why you got We that. can't be rooting for people in masks. I know where that leads. Like, <laughs> yeah, holy right, shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, interesting. Yeah, what do you got to hide? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's, you would say that kind of stuff in the comic, but now it's like, oh... Now I get where he gets that from. Yeah. No, because they really did have to hide their identities, <laughs> and you know what I mean? And, and yeah, so. <laughs> Let me throw it to this point. I want to hear your thoughts on, um, so how Jace went through this whole thing of, like, he has this history of magic making a big impact on his and his mother's lives, literally to not dying, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, He's in front of the council. 
and he's going through this, like, kind of show, like, Heimerdinger advised him of, you know, just say what you were doing was wrong. You didn't really understand the consequences. Heimerdinger is like trying to be a good guy, Greg. You know, he's he kind of yeah, kinda, he really is trying to own it. Let it go. It's okay. And okay, I'm hearing you're getting into some freaky shit. Yeah. Just don't do that now. I've been around for like literally hundreds of years because I'm a different breed of fucking yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Three hundred and something. I mean, he said, yeah, yeah. Uh, let let it let that go. But that's aside from what we're talking about here. Just kind of generally own it. Don't even tell them about it. And now that I know, especially don't tell them about it. Yeah. Like, I've got your back. <laughs> and I'll some voice up for you. But, like, you got to kind of own it and just let it go and not pursue this. And you've got a great future. And you just kind of got to bow your head this time. Right. And he chose not to. <clears throat> and he kind of got what he could be expected. Sure. For yeah. doing that. Um, but, like... I just want to hear your thoughts on that entire sequence, like, the whole scene. I mean, we talked a little bit about, like, how much, like, everybody else is veiled in darkness and stuff like that, but how did that hit you on a first time viewing? Two very different characters, although they have common interests, Mm -hmm. you know, like, older, wiser experience and a young, young, ambitious scientist, Mm -hmm. and different, some different motivations, right? Mm -hmm. But this is interesting because despite that, I felt both of them were very, very relatable to me. Yeah. You know, so... You know, when I take a look at Heimerdinger, mm-hmm. um, I'm like, I, I, okay, I, I don't want to oversell myself, but really, I would think I would do that. I would be like, look, let's make strategy for you to make this as painless as possible. I'm sorry, I don't think I can get you out of everything, but we, we can, I can tell you what to do to limit the damage as much as you can. Yeah. Okay. Damage so, control. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. like, I'm dam- We're gonna damn control here, you know, and then I'll help you. I'll, I'll speak up for you, and you know, I'm like that's my approach. Mm-hmm. And then he chooses to bring it up. Well, here's the thing. I'm not saying I would do this because this takes a lot more courage, but I might. Mm. Now, I wouldn't do it, and I can tell you from experience, I don't do it when it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, uh, trivial things, mm. right? Like, even if I think I'm right, I'm not going <laughs> to sacrifice myself for it. I admit, pick your yeah, I pick my yeah. battles. But there have been some times... I will say I was expected to do something that I thought was critically unsafe many years ago. Yeah. And I felt the hammer coming down on me from different levels of we power. We can leave the General Electric Company that was responsible for that situation yeah. outside yeah, of this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> People who live here might know who we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. So anyways, <laughs> but I didn't buckle, mm-hmm. but I felt the pressure. A yeah. lot. And I felt like uh, walking back to my desk, somebody tell me, I'm going to get fired, I'm going to get fired, I'm going to get fired, right? So if I'm pushed hard enough and I believe in something enough, I will put my ass on the line to some degree. Yeah. So I would like to think I would do the same thing if and only if I believed it was groundbreaking science that was going to move the world forward, mm-hmm. you know, and which he does, mm-hmm. right? And I think you might be right. I mean, they seem to portray it as that, right? Like, yeah. it's truly an we'll see. Thing. Yeah, we'll see, I guess. There, there is some <clears throat> uh, lengths of development along that thought line that aren't fully represented in the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually interested to see if there's a season two, if we start to get into where some of that stuff can go. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, again, without spoiling things, can say with Victor and with the city's, like economy as a whole how things kind of like work out mm-hmm. um there's things that are kind of openly discussed in the lore um that are spoilers if you know the mm-hmm. lore um but it is uh definitely that is answered by the end of the series like where where it's going you like you can kind of right. get a vibe right right so you know so I, yeah i i thought well i thought it was a great scene great for character development made both characters to me very likable mm-hmm. And, like, it's funny, when Victor first arrives, he's almost functioning as a bureaucrat, not a scientist. Yes, right? absolutely. And so, he's totally different from the first intro. I was jarred yeah. after, again, because I haven't revisited the opening episodes as thoroughly as I have the later episodes. It was kind of jarring to see how he acted again, because he's yeah. very much how he became by mm-hmm. episode three, the rest of the series. Okay, yeah. So it's like, 
Whoa, yeah, I forgot yeah. how much you were just, like, in the zone and just kind of like, yeah, fuck you, Jason, I don't know who the fuck you are. Yeah, You're right. going to fucking jail. <laughs> All this shit, you blew something up, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's funny. A little sympathy, but, like, I don't know you. You're yeah. going to jail. And, it, and it's like, I didn't hate him or anything, yeah. but he, he almost felt to me like a... Um, I don't want to overemphasize it, but uh, I didn't have deep feelings because it wasn't enough to give me deep feelings, but mm. it was like a... Uh, you're kind of bureaucrat. You yeah. know what I mean? Kind of like you're just doing, you're just pushing the pencil to, you know, whatever. You were asked to go down here and take care of this, and you're just kind of. You? It's like, yeah. here I am with my friggin' dustpan. You right. know, right. <laughs> right. Kind of, you know, like that. But he, what he developed mm-hmm. was a total, and this is why I try not to entirely decide on a character, right? Because, mm-hmm. hey, you know, it's Victor the bureaucrat became Victor cool dude you know what i mean yeah, like, really. like, like hey we're gonna save you yeah the savior the help totally you know saving jace's ass you yeah. know but it, it also really appreciating the scientific development and yes. wanting to take it where it was going you know he and had with the her courage that heimerdinger was lacking that's true right yeah. although i give heimerdinger some like uh kind of a i give him an out after 300 plus years he gets to wave the hand wave well, some stuff away <laughs> but he had a flashback right where he was like you don't know the consequence you don't know that you know so i will say this and this isn't oh are we froze right now oh i wonder how long we were froze like right? <laughs> anyway i guess we'll find out we're, we're, we're a little bit choppy we're a little, a little chuggy uh-oh oh. my encoder's chugging a little bit uh, are we doing part one and part two for this? What's going on right now? Let's check out. Why are we choking? Let's look at the <laughs> thing. Oh my god, is it because I had to have it open this way? Is this the price of 4K? Is this the price of our beautiful faces <laughs> being in 4K? Okay, let's live tech support, baby. Oh yeah. What can I do to make this stop dying on me? And I really wasn't looking at the screen for quite a while. Yeah, um, me either. <laughs> it's like you, the camera, you, the camera occasionally, and not screen. Okay. We will go ahead and do something really briefly here. Uh, what is choking? It is this. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. It's okay. It's all right. Everybody's fine. Well, listen to my beautiful voice. If you want, I can speak about things while you get to focus. Out of mind, you know. I'm just making sure that I didn't run out of disk space because my solid state drive is choking really hard right now. It seems to be. I mean, it's a oh. fucking solid state drive. I yeah, don't know no what kidding, to right? Tell you, like that is supposed to not be the bottleneck anymore. I would uh, think. Um, I thought they were supposed to be quick as hell, badass. I actually have one of mine at home, but I've never tested it like you are now, you know. Yeah, we are kind of doing 4K streaming right now. Right. Pass through streaming. I guess I'm <clears throat> starting to push the limits. We're live experimenting. Indeed. Um, where is the... See, just I have enough lives. free space. I've got fucking 600 gigs of free space, so that wasn't it. It seems to have calmed down. I guess yeah, I'll just try to so. keep a close eye on it now. Okay, goodness. Um, now we learn as we go. Um, anyways, but... I didn't have the lights on when we first started. What do you fucking expect? Welcome to the stream. (laughs) Anyway. Like, like, Heimerdinger seems to be a guy of conscience. Yes. And if he saw really terrible things happen in the past with this, you know, because, like, I am very much in favor of scientific development. Mm -hmm. But there are certain scientific developments where I would put the genie back in the bottle if I could. Yes. I understand nuclear power gives us beneficial things. I get that. Yeah, we can build dams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's let's do something else. If it, if we could put all those nuclear bo- if the nuclear concept was gone, yeah, right. If we couldn't destroy the world, yeah, then I would put that genie back in the bottle. And if he felt like that, then I get it. You know what I mean? Like, so, so I don't know if this is gonna be elaborated <clears throat> on in a season two that's coming. They have said a season two is coming. Um, it could be a ba- bigger thing that's being built towards in the lore overall, but there is some reference, and I don't know this in full detail, but my recollection off the top of my head, of something in the distant past, perhaps in Heimerdinger's lifetime, but early lifetime, of something called the Great Rune War, mm. which was uh, kind of referenced when they were discussing briefly when once Jace brought up magic, the, uh, how much damage mages can do and have done in the past. Mm. And they were talking about entire civilizations essentially wiped out. And it's not fully elaborated as far as I know in the lore, but essentially 
Um, there's a character who's not appeared in the series yet, uh, at least that I know of, <laughs> called Rise, mm. um, who's a very talented mage, and he's kind of hinted at towards trying to collect some of these runes uh, that are very powerful, that have been harnessed in the past by people who were willing to just wipe things out. Oh, Philosopher's Stone kind of thing. Yeah. That, yeah okay, gotcha. Very, uh, on an epic scale of, like, <clears throat> devastation. Right. Um, so, this is something that has been experienced in the greater land of Runeterra in the past, and is mm -hmm. distant enough to where a lot of people have forgotten. Okay. And I feel like Heimerdinger, if not has experienced it firsthand, has come briefly after when people were still reeling and rebuilding. Sure. And the lessons were fresh, and he was brought up with this knowledge. And I feel like that's some of the thing, trappings that he has as a character of, like, just not willing to do it. No, yeah. fuck it. I yeah. don't care. No, 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 that makes sense. Even the briefly after, because it's funny, uh, generations continue and things change. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking with a number of Jewish people whose parents went through the Holocaust, yeah, it's a deep impact, you know, even for those mm -hmm. children, like, they their parents are traumatized, you know, yeah. and for good reason. And what they hand down about it is like, you know, this is an evil that must never happen again, kind of, you know, for understandable reasons. Absolutely. So if Heimerdinger was on any either end of that, you know what I mean, like concurrent or j just shortly thereafter, mm -hmm. it would be enough to yeah to send you into that realm of caution. If it's yeah, it sounds like a Holocaust. You're and in about. his race, like but, a, a generation before, is quite far in the past. Right, yeah, so, yeah, okay. It doesn't take much to reach far back to when this could have happened, and I don't think we get any more, uh, again, I think it's called the Great Rune War, but mm. I don't think we get any more in Arcane about it than what we've already had, but that's kind of the knowledge I have, which is still kind of murky and open to uh, development okay. and later in the series. Sure, yeah, it could even be like a prequel if they want to. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There. I, I kind of had when this was first coming out, I was wondering if they were going to completely, before the last three episodes were out, if they're going to completely kind of tie everything in a neat bow mm. and then leave these characters and explore a whole other set of characters. Because they're like, I don't know, easily over 150 characters now. So mm. there's, and tons of different regions. Ionia, I'd be so hyped to see Ionia. It's like this uh, uh, I mean, very I like <laughs> Eastern vibe of okay. like, uh, and kind of like native vibe of like, we're one with nature. Oh, okay. Um, like, shrines are kind of prevalent imagery, but then also, like, um, <clears throat> the the structures they build, a lot of them are, like, built and interwoven with the nature. Okay, so, like, the yeah. trees kind of, like, through the magic inherent in the land, instead of, like, harnessing it through technology, like Piltover is trying to do, um, I, I well, don't... Jace is trying to do. They're more, like, in tune with the nature inherent in the world. So, like, their trees, kind of like hobbit homes, like, grow right, right. into the land and into their structures. And I've never seen that in real life. Yeah. I've seen a fraction of it in some old Japanese villages where things are kind of naturally grown together a little bit. Mm -hmm. Really old stuff here. Really rare, you know. I've but. seen some uh, housing that's <clears throat> been built hyper expensive, not at all realistic for average consumers, but, like... They've built, uh, construct, uh, they've constructed structures, <laughs> uh, to go with, like, the grade of a hill. Oh, yeah, And okay. stuff like this, and they're, they're primarily built as, like, an art piece. Somebody late in their career wants to do something interesting, We but... saw one in Germany. Oh, really? Yeah, my wife, when I was there with my wife, with Naomi and, and uh, Yuki. Uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, so that, and that's the only one I've ever seen personally. Mm -hmm. What I have seen a bit is where they have, like... Levels that'll be with greenery, and I've seen this in Japan and other places too. I think definitely mm -hmm. in Japan, uh, where they'll have like a like imagine a high rise, and the top level will be like a garden. It'll be like fully grass and everything Absolutely, like that. You know, yeah. it'll be built to do that, so mm -hmm. it's not going to be undermined, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll have different like buildings of green spaces into buildings. Mm -hmm. It's not what we saw before in the anime. That's like a far. Yeah. That's twenty years in the future, but it's you know like the predecessors, the humble beginnings of that. Sure, you know, absolutely. And uh, I think it's really cool. Actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've always loved the aesthetic of just like uh, I remember when I was back in high school. Um, we watched this movie, and I forget the name of it. I'd love to plug it. It was actually really cool, but it was like Earth Without Humans or something titled mm. like that. Oh, and it was basically like a time lapse of if people just disappeared, bar none, period, today, mm -hmm. what would happen? 
And then it's like, okay, here's the first couple days. Well, obviously, planes fall out of the sky because people disappeared while planes were flying. Right, yeah. Like, all the machinery and electrical stuff that we have to manually control just kind of stops working because we're not manually controlling it or runs in perpetuity for a month or whatever before a maintenance cycle hits and then it just stops working. Right. Um, And then it goes, okay, what about like 10 years? What about 100 years? What about 1,000 years? And you see nature slowly reclaiming these cityscapes and it goes to eventual scopes of like, okay, well, we have flying squirrels that could easily navigate between skyscrapers at a certain development height. Right. And, okay, what would that start to breed in their predators? And then you start to get this development through evolution of yeah. these different species that are very logical. And, like, all these feral house cats, formerly house cats and dogs, kind of returning back to more wolf yeah. style. Yeah, sure. Like, very interesting show. So I've, al- I've always dug that vibe of, like, nature slowly reclaiming the land that we've mm-hmm. terraformed into these, like, concrete jungles. Um... If we can do that in a sustainable Near way Obama. that works with us, yeah. You know, if we can do that without the yeah. destruction of Mir, yeah, yeah, that yeah. would be super cool. <laughs> well, I think that that's a very interesting point, because the, the opportunity to do that, should it arise, would likely be in places where, for whatever reason or another, something otherwise, like the population is declining enough to organize something like that. Yeah. You know, uh, St. Louis... Which is going to be every first world nation here in the next 10 years. <laughs> well, I mean, well, St. Louis has already seen a lot of population decline, yeah. and they've cut down whole rows of houses and stuff, just leveled them and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there are places, of course, where you can get houses for next to nothing. But, yeah. you know, and it's, so it's... Uh, I wonder if you have a confluence of enough interest and money and population decay, which might be hard to come by, Sure. But over enough time, you might get it. You might yeah. get it somewhere, you know. And honestly, I kind of wonder. Right now, I don't know how much Tokyo's population has been changing. Japan's going down. It's been going yeah. down for years. But even after to- or Japan started going down, Tokyo was going up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know where they're at now. But at some point in time, they need decay as well. Because, well, there's a massive influx of people into the cities to get jobs. Yeah. You know, not only Tokyo, but, you know. So, but Story I of the last few hundred years. Co- yeah. And it's accelerated in Japan. It's like you're seeing... Japan is sort of um, on the cutting edge of some of these things, I think. Because there's other places of population decay, but uh, as far as entire first world nations, they're mm-hmm. dealing with some of the most exacerbated issues when it comes to abandoning farmland and moving to the cities and a, and a very low birth rate, you know, and everything that brings with it, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like, <laughs> how are we going to deal with it? Like taking care of the old people. Robots? <laughs> you know? Yeah, question mark. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of so. I mean, yeah. well, but honestly, uh, I don't wish it on anyone. Realistically, yeah. if we're going to be wise, we will learn vicariously. Yeah. See them do it, see what they did well, see what they did poorly, and try to do it better the next time. Mm-hmm. Um, or in Japan's case, run that through several levels of administration oh, and yeah. then try to do better. Yeah, the next <laughs> yeah. <time. laughs> yes, yeah, run through a completely opaque bureaucracy that's its own culture, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and a completely irresponsive government where you don't get to vote for the prime minister. Did you, did you know that? I don't know if you know that or not, but huh. you, you, you can't vote for the prime minister. You can only vote for the political party. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. they can, they, then, as I've said to people, when I describe this to people, I tell them that they can appoint Sparky the Wonder Dog to prime minister, yep. and there's not a damn thing they can do about it yeah you know it's it's you know how you can handle it no different next cycle oh god i'm so yeah. tired of hearing oh this shit. sure well, welcome to the america party. yeah and then they'll work they'll, they'll they'll appoint corky the wonder pup right you know right. and it's no no it wasn't the problem wasn't he was a, a dog and not a pup <laughs> <laughs> you know? um so it's just i mean it's it's how do i when i i like to talk to people when i go there about mm. a variety of issues Mm-hmm. And when I bring up politics, you know what reactions I get? Doom. <laughs> Utter hopelessness. <laughs> you know, like, Doom. Yeah, just like <laughs> looking down like, oh shit, dude. No. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, I just want to know your opinion. Yeah. We're screwed. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen uh, um, the... I don't think it's the most recent one anymore, but it's a fairly recent Godzilla movie. I think it was called Shin Godzilla. It had the Godzilla I, that, like, evolved. I have not, and I probably should, though. It was directed by... Uh, I think the name is Hidaki Anno. He's the one who did Evangelion. Oh, okay. He's well, that, that guy. Okay, then, <laughs> then I should definitely see it. It doesn't have mechs in it, but, like... No, but it has some cool things, you know, monstrous-sized things. 
what steals the show of that movie, and this isn't a spoiler, is how much of a shit he takes on the culture of bureaucracy in Japan. Oh. <laughs> so, like, one of the things, and this is a small spoiler, but not it doesn't really destroy anything, because it's more funny just that it happens. Um, the Godzilla that you see in this movie kind of, like, evolves throughout the movie. Um, mm. So, like, one of the things is, like, when they first see it happening... I think we're a little choppy. Oh, fuck a moly. I'm so glad you're paying attention, because I sure am. I, I'm not. I, I it's was... good on the camera, but we're getting oh. a little... Getting a little issue with the solid state drive. Might be time for a new solid state drive. I don't know. Those things are pretty cheap. One terabyte solid state isn't handling this? So, I think it might be a rewrite issue and less of the space, because I okay. checked the space, we've got like two-thirds of the space open. Like, um, that's more processing power than God. I'm gonna do a God. quick blip here. For those <laughs> who are live on the stream, hang tight for just a minute. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, hey, how's it going, sexy? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think because it's involving the recording, we're actually having issues more with the recording. So you know what, I'm going to start this stream back up here and let everybody know, hey surprise motherfucker we're doing part two, so stay tuned, click the next video, it'll be linked somewhere on your screen. <laughs> oh, what does that say? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to part two where I'm learning how to get good according yeah. to Eric's words. <laughs> yes, well, I was like, so. I, I tell you, I wasn't good enough to beat Millennia right away at all. I mean, she made a pile of corpses out of me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were talking about uh, the recent Godzilla movie before oh, we get right, 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 right yeah. back to uh, <laughs> the actual... Th uh, which direction am I going here? Yes, here and here <laughs> are Kane, what we're actually Oops. talking about. Um, but so, uh, the Godzilla... Right, so damaging um, things here. You're good. Uh, uh, the Godzilla movie uh, really takes the piss out of the Japanese bureaucracy, oh, particularly right, in their government. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> so funny. It's a lot of inaction, and like it opens with like Godzilla is like this underwater creature, mm -hmm. and they're like, what the fuck is happening? Like, they don't even know what it is. It takes several rounds of meeting to identify who <laughs> should tell them what it is, that kind of thing. And then the one thing they tell the Prime Minister, because their statement has to be made, people are starting to be affected, potentially losing their lives, is, okay, oh, you know what, I can probably edit these videos together. Boom! Anyway, had that thought live. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh... Prime Minister, the one solid piece of advice he's told is, you we don't know what's happening, so you definitely can't make promises about whether or not it can uh, have landfall. Mm -hmm. We know it's in the water now, but we can't be sure. Right. We think it's probably just in the water, we don't see really how, but we're just not sure this is new territory. Mm. And what is the first thing he comes out and says on live TV? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry! It can't go on land. And then it <laughs> fucking goes on land because it's Godzilla. So. <laughs> well, it's funny. I could see, like, a certain degree of bullshit and incompetence, for sure. But when it comes specifically to bureaucracy, I wasn't kidding when I said opaque. People see it as, like, they're doing what they do. It's like a separate society. Yeah. And it's not responsive to us. And it's all about their own inner deals. Like, like they will make an airport in the middle of nowhere that never gets used just so they can send some people to go have their last few years of retirement there as favor. Right. You know, I mean, like, it's that kind of stuff where, you know, it, it's like, I am all about good infrastructure, and Japan has awesome infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, I mean, I love the Shinkansen, the bullet trains, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I even like the local trains a lot. Even the really old ones that are still in use are, like, uh, how do I put it? They're classy, you know, to me. They're like mm -hmm. cool classic things. Like they have a really old. It goes from Ginza to Asa. <laughs> and I'm I'm puckered up on a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm go. seeing if I can uh, do a quick little drop of the uh, quality here from 4K for the rest of this, but I I'm not sure. I literally I'm l literally not sure that I can. Okay. <laughs> So this we might be able to do. Anyways, um, looks like we're frozen right now. That's okay. okay I, I just let you know. As we go in and out of uh, 
live video. I hope people are enjoying this in podcast format. Yeah. Because we're going old school <clears throat> podcasty uh, here. here. Yeah. I, I guess. Yeah, as far as, uh, but yeah, it, the, some of their old ones are kind of just interesting and feel of them. I, I, I'm not, you know, they have stuff that's also not super new anymore, but it's just really cool in design. Like they have a monorail that goes out from, uh, to Odaiba from, um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the station it originates at. Uh, but it goes out through a bunch of stuff in Odaiba. Odaiba is a man made island, but it starts on the mainland and it goes out. Better. And it, it, like, weaves through skyscrapers, and you can see gardens below and stuff in, like, these different areas. And so really you get kind of close to them, too. So it's really good, like, on a monorail gliding right by skyscrapers on mm. the way out to the man-made island of Odaiba, which is all futuristically looking and everything. That's pretty sick. <laughs> and, well, I love it. I actually uh, got, I think back then it was probably a 1080p video. I don't even know what I've done with it, but I might just do it again then, or 4K <laughs> this time. But I, I got a video of my, this whole trip. I went out, I oh, got nice. in the front of it, and I, you know, co- kind of got, blocked the light, you know, yeah. and I just took the whole thing, you know, <laughs> like, That's yep, dope. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm that nerd. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hopefully uh, we won't have any more choking here, but... Uh... We're, you know, we full, we finally got up to 4K and we're going to have to downgrade the stream to 1080. Hopefully that will be enough and we can still get the video in 4K, but next stream we should be able to do everything in 4K. I'm probably just going to get a new solid state drive and find a little better read I mean, we got a fucking video encoder. We got like a professional grade camera. Like, I mean, it's not like fucking one of those like over the shoulder ones, but it's like a photographer camera. Well, this is good for me to see. We got a nice new Yeti mic. Like, Jesus. Yeah, this is, no, this is really good for me to see so that like I have this in my mind where I'm going to set stuff up for my wife. Chad, if you could help me peer pressure him to stream uh, Bioshock Infinite, that would be great. I think we have another issue. Yeah, no, it's just... It's pegged out again. I'm just letting it go. This is as good as okay. I can do with the yep. live settings not, for this. I'm time. not going to sweat it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, but, but sh- when you figure all this out, share, yeah. share it with me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Because yeah, I, I, I just, I will do the exact same thing. It's like, I just need to buy a $5 part. <laughs> I would not know it. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll bang my head against the wall. So, anyways, though. Uh, Jumping back to the main topic we yes, have here. Okay. Arcane. Yeah. So, enough gushing about Shin Godzilla. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I want to talk uh, about as well. So, um, Mel is a character that hasn't been really fully developed yet, but we're starting to see these interesting kind of reactions. Because mm. initially she seemed... Uh, she see, she has this, like, cow streak towards the rest of the council. Mm-hmm. She kind of is like, ah, yes, the child's toy will yeah. be what we need. Yeah, I remember that, so yeah. That was a, one of my favorite moments with her. Um, and then she's the one who kind of sees the potential in Jace. One of the things I was thinking about in my second viewing here, well, not second viewing, but rewatch, <laughs> um, was... I wonder how much of it is her character is obviously young and kind of similar age to Jace, mm-hmm. and a lot of the rest of the council is older. Yes. Um, the other youngest looking character we have is Caitlin's mom, but Caitlin mm-hmm. appears to be a peer or close to Jace, yes. perhaps a little younger, maybe. Okay. It's not yeah. entirely clear from the vibe of the show if she's fully peered with Jace or if she's slightly younger. Uh, I can't quite tell. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely don't see it. I don't know, you know. But so uh, she's young adult to me. But she has a uh, our her mom is on the council, and she seems to be the youngest other one aside from Mel. Okay. Um, so I mean, you know, the mechanical man. It's hard to tell how old he is, but <laughs> certainly sure. Heimerdinger is quite old, and some of the the other men on the council appear to be older as well. Yeah. So I wonder how much. Mel's willingness to explore this new taboo thing is just due to her youth. Mm. Because it seems like all all these people who are like the wise, sage, older people seem to be like, no, 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 no the arcane is not to be fucked with. Right. Um, but then you have Mel, who's young, and on the council, very hoity-toity as far as we know, very higher class as far as we know, mm. embraces the idea. You have Jace, young upstart, coming through the ranks, doing well, um, actually forging the ground himself. And then you have Victor, 
the the man who's like kind of Suzaku esque from Code Geass, like okay. come through <laughs> this rank ranking system that would have otherwise abandoned him, and is this shining example of how he can make it through this bureaucracy if he plays ball? All of a sudden, mm-hmm. putting it all on the table to throw plain ball out the wind and try to actually forge ground for science. Yeah. But they're all kind of young, and I wonder how much this mm-hmm. is like a commentary on people kind of getting set in their ways and not being willing to take these risks anymore. That is a fair point. I see it as a not perfectly overlapping Venn diagram, you mm-hmm. know, where it's like youth and risk taking. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So certainly not all youth are risk takers. Yeah. But and certain old people take more risks than they probably should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's putting it mildly. Yeah. So um but that said, I remember she said Mel said something directly about, you know, sometimes you have to take risks, you know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people have that kind of mentality inherently, you know. Hard to tell, but you're right. Everybody involved to this point is young. Uh, as I see it develop, I don't know, and I'll have to see if other people, how they come on board or resist or what they, how they approach it. And if it's a matter, if it's clearly disaggregated by youth and not youth, mm-hmm. right? Mm, then I would say, yeah, or like aggregated, I should say. But I don't know. I mean, it's, it, then maybe it's explicitly meant as that kind of commentary. Mm-hmm. And I think there's, there's meaning in that. Mm-hmm. Um, there is meaning in that. Um, I can only hope that with some kind of wisdom, people will still be willing to take risks if the value seems to be there, you know. Mm-hmm. But that might not always be true, and then, yeah, there is a certain amount of getting set in your ways as you get older. Um, I certainly have seen that. I am definitely older, and I'll be completely honest, a lot of my opinions are continuing to change. Yeah. You know, um, in a wide variety of complex topics, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so... And I'm willing to, you know, like a lot of people, it's funny, a lot of people at my age are willing to sell down. Mm. Um, I haven't decided to move, but I could, yeah. you know, um, especially if the right opportunities arise. Yeah, we were just talking about yeah, that earlier. Yeah, we were just earlier. talking about that earlier, right? Yeah, a lot of people my age don't even, you know, it's like, no, I'm just going to. Like, this is it? This yeah, is where I'm Yeah, be. exactly, yeah. right? So I can, I can roots see down. That. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to see. Part of it is I want to see what's best for my kid. Yeah. You know, Cause, and I'll be talking to her about it. Like, if she's like, daddy, don't go, I don't know. I'm just not gonna, but you know, but if she's open to a new start mm-hmm. or really wants one, yeah. you know, then that would weigh heavily in all my decisions. I am interested too in the uh, comparison between what's happening down in Zolan uh, with that same dynamic of like you have these elders who are um, like trying to maintain the peace no matter what. Mm-hmm. Like, the head enforcer and Vander are both trying to keep things as they are. Um, but then you have people who are willing to take risks. Like, the <clears throat> protege enforcer is willing to try to see, is there a way to squeeze a little bit more out of this? Turns <laughs> out, no, that was a fucking error. <laughs> yeah. Boy, was that a fucking yeah. error. So we get an example right away of how I can not pay off. Risk sure. isn't always good. Um, but on the exact direct opposite side of that coin, you also have uh, Silco, who's like willing to take similar risks, but to try and be more aggressive from the opposite perspective of trying to get this freedom for the nation of Zon. Um, what uh, and it obviously like all Vi, Jinx, all of them powder. Um, are more rabble rousing kind of side of it, more <laughs> willing to take risks, more willing to push the envelope. Um, that parallel is, as far as like the elders seeming to want to maintain versus take the risks, and mm-hmm. the youth seeming more willing to take the risk. But you wind up in this kind of dichotomy of like from the Piltover side of it, the risk is like, don't mess with the arcane. Like, yeah. We're not going to mess with the arcane, the arcane is too dangerous. And in Zon, it's more of like, about principles and like freedom and more esoteric things less about like material scientific risk and more about like this ethos of like what can you lose emotionally to try to gain this emotional sense of independence and freedom which Mm -hmm. is kind of abstract it's not really clear at this point in the show at least what independence really means i mean we have freedom from the enforcers Mm -hmm. that's a very material thing that has already been demonstrated in the show where the enforcers came through and we're just trouncing through the entire area zone, yeah. <laughs> essentially. Um, 
But a lot of the day-to-day life, I mean, people seem to have, like, largely even adjusted to that. Like, mm-hmm. before some of the uh, scenes in the last episode, people were just kind of used to enforcers milling about and mm-hmm. looking for someone, it seemed. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that might be so. So I wonder how much... It's a, it's trying to be a commentary on, like, getting set in your ways or resting on your laurels or just kind of needing to, like, how, how much youth can uh, lead people to be reckless versus be a necessary evil in the pursuit of something better. Yeah. Because it's not... Everything in the show does not necessarily work out for the better. No, <laughs> and we've I, already seen that. But I, I, it's funny. It's There's risk-taking mm-hmm. is, is in and of itself a complex kind of an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole idea, I think, is not to necessarily patently avoid or be eager to take risks. It's to really measure that value, understand it the best you can, and then try to make the best decision you can. And I yeah. don't ever want to be a person that won't take risks. But I also don't want to be a person that takes foolish risks, particularly ones that hurt others. Absolutely. So, really, if you want to see me be extremely non-risky, and this is, I have to just describe my job a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I work in, like, real-time grid stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I am very risk-averse mm-hmm. in that situation because I could knock out somebody's lights or endanger them, and I just deeply, from the, bo- the to the bottom of my soul, <laughs> I do not want to do that. Yeah. But if the if it's something different in my own personal life and the risk is to me, I can be stupid and bust my ankle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but that's less, yeah. less consequential. Um, so uh, yeah, it depends. Well, what's the, but here's the thing too: is what's the payout? Yeah. You know, because like it, it, the risks, greater risk starts to become more acceptable with the greater payouts in terms of like saving human life or yeah. you know like whenever you put money into scientific research it's a risk that it won't pan out yeah. but if i have two research projects and 10 million dollars to put into them and one of them is to you know put a uh, an amplifier in your butt that turns your farts into song you know right and, and the other one is to get a better cancer medicine yeah. well i'm gonna form the cancer medicine you know right so uh, but that that's easy to talk about this is hard yeah. This is difficult because I don't know what will come with this. I couldn't, you want to know the truth? You know why I wouldn't be making the risk over this new technology? Because I don't know what it means. And you yeah. can't ask me to take a risk when I'm entirely ignorant, you know? Yeah. Maybe by the end of this, I'll have a better idea of what that risk really is and I could be able to tell you whether or not I would support it. But, you know, uh, then again, if you give me everything I laid out, then mm-hmm. it's not even, it's not a fair risk assessment, mm. right? Because now I know everything. But I at least need to know, like, okay, this could be great. Why? Yeah. I don't know why. One thing that's yeah. iconic for Jason in the game is he has this, like, uh, giant hammer mm-hmm. that kind of uses, like, a <clears throat> technology that he's developed, not necessarily this hex tech he's talking about, but mm-hmm. it's clearly like steampunky mechanical. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, that's kind of his signature weapon that he's made for himself. Um, and the detail that they said in these opening episodes about like his family it is a lower house, but they're like someone who's done, like, extremely well for themselves, it sounds like, from mm. all... Aside from the lower house comment, everything right. else is, like, oh, they've, like, found great success in this mining business they've developed. They've developed a lot of very useful tools for people in mining. That's probably why they've done so well, because they're so much more efficient or safe or effective or whatever. Right, right. Um, so I love that development of, like... He, he comes from this area of, like at least what would feel like a very practical approach to improvement in people's lives. And some of the things he said about, like, not just his motivation about, like, okay, magic has saved my life and my mom's life, but, like, I've seen how it can materially help people. Mm. And I want to develop technology in the same way we've already developed technology and built over as a whole through the, all the steampunk self, steampunk yeah. stuff we have, that has materially improved people's lives. I want to do the same thing, but with this technology. Sure. Yeah. And that gives me a lot of hope in that risk evaluation you're talking about with Jace mm-hmm. of like, if if someone's gonna take a risk, I would like it to be Jace. Okay. Because he's gonna develop something that would probably materially help people. If mm-hmm. like, I don't know, if, if Vander took a risk, like, 
I think that it might be in an evaluation of like whether or not something will work out. But at the end of the day, once all the dust has settled and the new status quo is established, I don't know that the average person's material day-to-day life has been improved. Mm. I think they might feel something more esoterically positive, like they might mm, be more possibly. or less free, they might feel more or less safe, but I don't know that someone's going to have an easier time at work. Vander kind of, yeah, I don't think so. I think Vander's worth, uh, and I value it, mm-hmm. is... Like, well, me too. He, he, he's, he's, it's more about damage prevention, which is yeah. valid, you know? Sometimes Absolutely. those are the best decisions to make. Yeah. In fact, I think he and that other enforcer mm-hmm. were doing that, and I thought it was good work, you know? Mm-hmm. Sad that it blew apart, you know? Yeah. But... Well, it was clearly out of their control. They were really hanging on to the last moment. They that totally were. They, both that, of them, you could see the conversations individually. Like, yeah. she, like she was fretting over it. Like, I have to get someone. Yeah. He's like, I can't give you someone. Yeah. They're like, well, we're going to figure out how to make this work. Yeah. And she was like getting to a point in her own office where I remember she had a, a brief time. It's like, like, we're getting to where violence can't be avoided, you know? Yeah. And she's like really not happy about that yeah. obviously and there's a message that comes through it's like maybe we have hope you okay, know like, one last chance, one last chance. Like, <laughs> yeah. like please you know like yeah. obviously she's invested in making to avoid averting this yeah. and of course he is as well yeah. so there's that now as far as the like I have even though it might be mundane to some people the truth is one of the greatest benefits that science and technology have given us mm. is the reduction in the required labor for a required outcome right? or a desired outcome. So there was a woman um, who was elderly to the point where I imagine she'd be either well over 100 or dead by now. So she's probably dead. Mm. Uh, on the way to the hospital uh, when she was pregnant, the uh, horse carriage turned over. Um, oh, you know, so, but that's, that's how old she was, yeah. right? You know, I mean, I guess she was all right, you know, but, yeah. but still, right? <laughs> so anyways, so a horse car accident. Yes, yeah, so it was a horse car accident. <laughs> Health time to have it, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, anyways, so, um, her, in her opinion, the best invention was the washing machine. She had to wash clothes before that came out, yeah. and she felt the difference of that. And that's just her perspective, sure. right? And we have all of our favorites. Hours a day. But in aggregate, that saves us a tremendous amount of back-breaking, body-destroying labor. Yeah. Everything put together, true. you know what I mean? Like, imagine if we were just like, if everything required manual labor, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if we didn't have any machinery to do things for us. Like, it, everything from manufacturing just to, you know, like, mining ores and metals and, you know, stuff like that. and like Just the laundry it, thing. It's, yeah. like, such yeah. a base accepted thing now. But it's, like, if you took 100 people's mm-hmm. laundry, uh, 200, 300, however many it has to be, let's say 1,000 to be safe. Mm-hmm. Like, the reason laundry mats can exist even now where uh, laundry equipment is standard in every rental and everything now. Right, yeah, pretty um, much. There are still laundry mats around because it's enough of a pain in the ass to where there's a whole business model there. Like, for every thousand people, one person could just do laundry all day, every day, and never run out. Right. Like, that's an entire wasted person yeah, of production say, for society. I was going to say, the laundry mats, pro- I'm guessing, they get a substantial amount of their business from people that are, that, you know, like have uh, broken machines. Yeah. And, like, some people can buy them right away, some people have to save up. Yeah. You know, and then you have, you have people that might have rental places that are slumlords, you know, that it's broken, they're not going to fix it. So, they're, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have situations, right. but it's it's marginal. It's the vast minority. It's got to be a very small percentage of society oh, yeah. that goes out to use the laundromat. I use them when I travel. Mm-hmm. You know, that's another element probably, sure. right? You know, um, but the other, if I'm not traveling, then I, I yeah, right? I mean, yeah. so, uh, it, but see, the thing of it is, coming back to, to the the. the the uh, risk of hex tech, right? Yes. If, if saying if I grant what you say is true, it's valuable. So then I have to ask, what's the downside? What yeah. are you risking? <laughs> the great rune war, <laughs> I guess. Okay. That's what Heimerdinger would if, say. If, if we're risking a holocaust, then I can't back it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it might but, not even be as particular as the holocaust was. It might be more indiscriminate than that. <laughs> well, in other words, it might be omnicide. I don't know if I'm just throwing this, you know, yeah. genocide being, mm. for, for our viewers, uh, yeah. uh, genocide, we know, right? Omnicide is for all of the human race. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> extinction. <laughs> Within whatever range of that zone is, I mean, I, 
the way it vibes is very similar to the way nukes feel. It just oh. obliterates mm. a zone. I'm sorry. No, I wouldn't back it. Yeah. I wouldn't back it. You know, like this is this is that actually kind of, kind of to your point earlier of the genie back in the bottle for nuclear. Yeah. Where we're kind of watching that with Hexac. I've never really thought of it as that parallel until just now, but I mean, it very much is the scale of which the Great Rune War is portrayed in these glimmers that we've gotten it. It's very much like you see depictions that they've had drawn by some artists they have in house of just like from a hill way off in the distance there's a city that is being illuminated by a glow and will not be there tomorrow right and it's okay. like mm. well it's mm. very much a similar so, vibe to that but maybe maybe structures would still be there maybe it only hits biological maybe vice versa it could be honed in some way to only hit structures or something so, it is magic but and, that's and, the vibe and i value the upside of it yeah. So it's not that I come to that lightly. Like, for example, if the downside was, no, 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 it's too unstable, it's hard to control, well, then let's be safe about how we test it until we right. finally make something that works. And maybe we're going to blow a lot of shit up for the next 10 years before we finally right. get it right. right. You know, and I would, I would support it at that point. Let's cautiously move forward. But if it is just the door to Armageddon, then I, you know, I just, I'll never support that. In fact, the truth is, there, I, I'm at a difficult place philosophically. I guess I'm going to die before I have to worry about it. But, like, <laughs> there's other forms of technology that I can see being harnessed that will provide much, much more energy than yeah. nuclear energy. How, we're cracking cold fusion now, but I'm talking past that. Mm -hmm. So, just to get one, be uh, harnessing antimatter. Mm -hmm. You know, but the way I've talked to a physicist about it before and, like, the way it he described it is that you could have something the size of a pencil eraser... Mm -hmm. And that would be like a bomb that could get rid of California, yeah. you know. And I mean, it, it, and I'm picturing like if you had a missile, you could just, you know, it's not cities, we're continents now, yeah. is what we're dealing with. And so it's a tremendous amount of destructive power. I think inevitably we're going to crack it. We're already doing research on antimatter on the war. No, I don't think we're going to crack it tomorrow. But, right. But, you know. We're not going to stop till we do until we get wiped out. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so that's the thing is I think we. So the the counter argument to my my stance is we have to learn to live with these levels of technology that yeah. are destructive. But my reply to that counter argument <laughs> is we haven't figured that out yet, yeah. and we better do that first, yeah. and then we can get them. <laughs> well, know? I've told you this in it's the like past. Like giving my kid a gun, you know. <laughs> one thing I've struggled with is you got to think that one day humanity is going to reach the point, whether we like it or not, whether we take these steps to try and make it <clears throat> slow and easing in and do it wisely or not. Mm -hmm. No matter how it's approached, there will be unless we get wiped out before then. <clears throat> There will be a point where that we reach technologically to where any child, um, or let's say teenager, to really yeah. capitalize on the angstiness, yeah, yeah. Um, can take household goods and assemble a button that, when pressed, will wipe out the species yeah, well, entirely. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I could... This is my, my view on it. Like, we could, I, I have to believe you're going to really ask me there will be an end to our species at some point. I know, but at some, at some point, point yeah. At some point, right? So will our epitaph be, we were idiots that, that grew our our power much greater than our wisdom? You know yeah. what I mean? Will that right. be our epitaph? Will we have a short life because we're, you know, foolish? Yeah. Or will our epitaph be, we live to become advanced enough to learn and become a deeply, intimately aware of the universe on a, like a holistic level, mm -hmm. and to leave our mark on this, on on this, in, in, like the indelible link of our ink of our works mm -hmm. will carry on forever, you yeah. know. And that was the great history of the great once living humankind. Is yeah. other intelligent beings could see what we did and say, that was pretty right on. Yeah. Or or will will the future alien archaeologists come say, get a load of these idiots? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make a comedy movie about humans. Didn't even make it past the nuclear age. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do you tell me you suck without telling me you suck? You, know? <laughs> you bomb yourself to death with nuclear weapons. <laughs> you say and, you're human. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I would hope for something better. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, Hope. that's that's the struggle, right? And this is where I've struggled in the past on deep spiritual journeys I've taken. <laughs> um, is like, how do you get 
an entire species, even if we get less numerous over time, which population seems to be trending that way or starting to crest yeah, a lot to of, trend yeah, that Yeah, it's, it's like we're going up, but I think we're hitting a peak soon. You know, like, yeah. By soon, I mean... Relatively. Relatively. Yeah. Maybe past my death. You know what I mean. Like, but even, even... I mean, just on the size of a country, even just the current size of our country... Like, how do you get everybody to a point where no one would press that button? You've got alcoholics, you've got drug yeah, addicts, you've got suicidal people, mm. you've got people who are just fucking serial killers and murderers and full of hatred or damage from things they've been through. Like, I mean... I don't think... Huh. I don't, yeah, I, I don't think you can. What I think we can ho- try to do is to, as wisely as we can, try to craft a society where we make the ability to do that more limited... Mm-hmm. I, I know I know we can't stop forever, but we, sure. you know it's like is it going to be in this Buy long or will it be much longer time? Can yeah. we be wiser with it, more controlled over what we need to control? Mm-hmm. Less energy put into killing each other and more and more energy into figuring out how to live together peacefully and protect ourselves. Yeah, right. Sure. So like these are the questions. I don't and it, it's it's not a yes or no question. It's it's a spectrum of how far we go along. You know, if you and I could sit here and make the most unreasonably perfect case. We're not going to do that, right? Yeah. And if I make the we're all dead tomorrow, probably not. Right? <laughs> yeah, we have to say probably yeah, for that one, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, because it's possible. Probably not. Probably, probably not. not. Yeah. You know, so where in between are we going to wind up? And it's doing our best to push it out there yeah. so that we can become more advanced and more developed. And maybe, wouldn't it be great? Okay, so this is something I've told you that I've thought, right? Mm-hmm. This is for me individually. The whole quote of society grows great when old men plant trees for which they will never see the shade. Yeah. I hope that can be true for us, for people, for me. We'll see. What I'm talking about is perhaps we can make a greater impact on the universe by our presence, by our study, by our development that is beneficial on a much greater level Mm -hmm. and is part of the universal story, like our existence from beginning to end will... Wouldn't it be great if we had a chapter of human existence that was seen as just an unimpeachable good? Yeah, I'm sure. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's the epitaph I'd like I mean, to that's leave. the thing. It's like we have these brief moments in history, like the Enlightenment. Yes, There's yeah, this yeah. great period of not true world peace per se, but like there's it's largely denoted not by <clears throat> shifting wars and power controls over different regions it's more about like there's a revolution of thought happening and there's Mm -hmm. it's a it's such an important change in how things are approached that people are like materially having their lives lifted in ways that were thought impossible previously yeah. Like, those are the moments that like, we really strive for as a society, or I hope we do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It feels like we try to, but it just it's, feels so out of reach in so many ways most of the time. You know, I think I feel the exact same way, but when I think about those people before the Enlightenment, for generations and generations, kings have ruled us for centuries. Yeah. They never seem to weaken in power. They just get stronger, and it just sucks, and they, they piss on us. And then the Enlightenment happens, mm-hmm. you know? So, and then, I mean, and then the people are running for their lives, because it seems to be maybe even worse when it happens, initially, yeah, because, yeah. like, you have all these, like, <laughs> principled, chaos. yeah, you have chaos, and you have principled, well-intended people, intelligent people that do important work, and they, they put these enlightenment principles out there, and then they run like hell, you yeah. know, and it's like, yeah. you know, try not to get killed, mm-hmm. um, and so... I can see that, like, that's a, a one example, but there are these times of development, and I know we sometimes step backwards, but there's times of development where we're stepping forward. Yeah. You know, and the Enlightenment period is one of them. In fact, that's a big thing for me with Europe and going to France in the Enlightenment period. I really have a deep respect for that. and mm-hmm. um, made a point of that with my trips there and with my my wife and kid and everything, you know, to try to kind of... This is the importance of it. Like, the, a lot of the human rights that you understand and know today Came were springboard from, from this, you know what I mean? Like, and it, and it was like, hey, why should a king control everything? Right. You know, why are you better than me? Right. You know, divine right of bullshit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, but... I'm not saying when, we may not live to see it, but I'm hoping that we can at least plant the seeds to set things forward so that one day we can have another enlightenment. Now we can call it something very different. And on different ground, that's fine, you Mm -hmm. know? I I can give a few examples of some things I'd like to see as far as as movements. Like, what if we came to a point where, and I'm going to insult some people here, may I do that? Is that? That's fine. Okay. 
I don't necessarily endorse anything you say, but uh, you are true. welcome to my platform. You've been invited to this episode. We'll see if you come back for the rest of the episode. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Cool, uh, please. Uh, solo analysis of Arcane episode 4 through 9. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've seen the potential for science and technology to improve human life. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we had such thorough buy-in from so much of the world, and it was so developed mm -hmm. that instead of there being essentially like places that are, and I don't look down on the people there at all, not, mm -hmm. there's no moral judgment here, but they're just not capable of contributing on any larger level to the mm -hmm. development of science and technology, right? Yeah. But imagine if across the entire world we were all developed enough to where human, humanity wasn't wasting most of its talent. And yeah. we were actually, yeah, really. if we were culturally and and civilization level, dedicated to that end. Instead of just my country, my people, you know, yeah. if we were actually, and I'm not trying to insult patriots here, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. if it's not tribalism, but just more of an extension of, wouldn't it be great if we could help other less developed countries leapfrog into a higher level of development right. and they can help us with their most talented people to crack the next codes that we need for better medicines. Oh, for but space then they travel. might own the crack though. We want to own the crack. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I get it. I know. I know. But you're not wrong, right? There's that perspective out yeah. there. And I know that people will disagree with me, but I just I think we could accomplish so much more. Imagine if we had an enlightenment period like that like okay yeah. if, if enough people in the who world who cares if the thoughts from the enlightenment came from someone in france or germany yeah. today totally yeah no one yeah it did not matter yeah. what matters is that it happened yeah exactly and that's the whole thing and so, it's and, and like i can imagine where i don't care where this comes from or starts mm -hmm. it, would, it would be a special place in history yeah. But let's, I don't care. It could come out of Afghanistan, okay? Right. And then the idea just takes forth, and it's like, you know what? We're, we need to develop this entire world, give everybody a fair chance at a fair life, and give them the ability to contribute to the further advancement of humanity. And we need to do that together. And instead of bombing the hell out of each other, let's build each other up. Yeah. You know? If enough of a critical mass of humanity moved in that direction and wasn't so damn tribalistic and self-interested... Right. That would be, you know, something I would want to see. I understand patriots may not agree with me on this kind of thing, but yeah. I, I think even they would benefit. Yeah. You know? Well, I think everybody would benefit from something like that. I mean, we talked about this long ago back when I still worked in politics. Yeah. Um, like, I'm a big favor of the idea of the way to get a country's allegiance is to not try to get it tomorrow through a deal to have a common enemy. Right. It's to go there and with a couple of lead people, hire a bunch of local people and build a shit ton of infrastructure and then put a fat fucking stamp on it that says made by your friends in America. <laughs> yeah. Everyone who uses that bridge for the next 40 years will be like, Americans not so bad. Yeah. Why do they do a lot of shit, but you know, they built that fucking bridge. That bridge has been very helpful. No kidding. Like, yeah. If, I if, mean, if our stamp is on hospitals and schools and bridges and, you know, yeah. and then For absolutely. everything that can be said about how predatory the Belt and Road shit China's been doing this, <laughs> yeah. which is patently predatory. They're uh, not even there's, trying there's to There's self-interest there, yeah. A hundred percent. But they are building shit. That's still And better, I do yeah. appreciate yeah. that. I do, I actually <laughs> do. I don't want to do it for cynical reasons. Yes, but, and but, it seems but, like that's I, their motivation. Yeah, that but like I will take what yeah. I can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still a better way to go than what than bombing people to hell, Mac. You yes. Know? So I'll take yeah. that. But yeah, I would hope we would get to the level of advancement where we could do that today because we fucking love each other. Right. Yes, Wouldn't that be just great? for that motivation, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so Unrealistic, unacceptable. Yeah, I know, I kind of... <laughs> Pie in the sky. <laughs> I, I know it has that feel to it, right? It's okay if I don't want to see it. Yeah. But I would feel... I'll never know, I'll never know, but I would feel gratified to know that I did something in this world to make it go closer to that. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's how I raise my child, or the work I do, or whatever else. Mm -hmm. I hope it moves everything in that direction. That That is a motivation for me. But I know I'll never have a discreet answer. Yeah. I just move forward hoping that I am. And trying yeah. to do it. You know. I just try. 
you know. I don't know if the computers I'm helping bring power to at their plugs <laughs> is going to power a computer that helps build a nuclear bomb or a computer that helps build a piece of graphic art that dude. I will consume. But, but I'm yeah. here to put the plug in. I was just going to say, dude, to say. <laughs> we have different <laughs> jobs, but essentially the same moral input and output, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm doing power systems on the larger grid, mm -hmm. and for whatever minor part, I'm just one person amongst an ocean of people, but, you know, but, but it's like, for whatever minor part I play, what good or ill will come of it, right? But I could, I, how do I put it? I couldn't live with myself making weapons. Yeah. You know, I, I just... Dave Ramsey uh, has said that uh, money, more money doesn't uh, solve your problems necessarily because sometimes the problem is who you are. <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, not necessarily just in the context of, like, money habits. Like, if you make more money, you don't necessarily, are, aren't necessarily able to save more. Mm. Because your problem is that you spend everything you make. So it doesn't matter yeah. how much everything is, if you're always going to spend it. Well, it's funny. Um, the, reason, the only reason I know I'm not like that is that as I've made more, I just save more and more and more. Me too. So it's like... Well, because we're naturally savers. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so it's like, if I make more, I'll definitely save more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> But so what the what he gets at with that is he says uh, it just, money just amplifies who you are. The more mm. money you have, the more you are that person. Because if you're kind of a dick when you don't really have anything, if you had money, you'd be one of those rich assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're somebody who like is barely getting by and still finds ways to like buy a nice thoughtful gift for your friends, when you have money, you're going to be outrageously generous. <laughs> you know, you're going to be a philanthropist, not right. one of these rich fucks, you know? And I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think that can be uh, analogized to the thing with government of, like, how much, like, we're at a just state in society overall as a globe where, like, when we come to get together in these forms of government, we worry about defense first. And you're going to come take what I, what little I have, and it's a scarcity mindset. Yeah, and I think putting yeah. aside how much the economics of abundance can help people materially, <laughs> just the idea of creating a culture of abundance, if everybody had enough, like, people would be less <clears throat> immediately worried about threats to them because they would feel more secure in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And that would manifest itself at, in a political scale for less. And then we could have this much more collaborative, like, UN originally idealized version. Mm. Because people would be less about, like, well, are you going to come fucking invade me and try to take my shit? Because everybody's uh, got enough shit. Yeah. Of course I, you aren't. I would agree with that. I think our systems of government are a real problem. Because when I see, like, even our own, right? Yeah. We have a lot of people that are kept poor are you system. are you saying there's not a perfect government out there right now? Uh, then, unacceptable not, not even, even not, ours yeah yeah right <laughs> unbelievable this man yeah, yeah i know it's like I'm, got, I'm, I'm 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 going to get myself uh excommunicated from the you know but, but really though i think we need to fix that as well yeah. as part of the problem you know and and i think it'll be harder to move the population if we're really doing fine yeah. and we don't have an obvious threat i think it will be a little harder to move the population towards that discontent yeah. you know but i don't think we can get it with what we have right now and the reason i say that is because you know if not, if ha i see societies that are closer to that like finland and denmark and stuff mm -hmm. and i've actually I've been to Denmark a few times and I've talked to people. Mm -hmm. um, they're closer to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, I'm not saying they're necessarily fully open. They have their own quirks and bigotries everywhere. And oh, but I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not there. But there's much more of a sense of less threat and like, the, like an ability, like, I don't know how I'd have to screw up to, be, to go poor here, right? Yeah. Homelessness is nearly non-existent in Denmark. Yeah. You know, in Germany, do you know what they do when they find a homeless person? Or at least the last time I knew. Um, they would send a police officer and a care worker. They would determine the problem and try to help them with it, whether it's drugs or mental problems or whatever else, and they would put them into a studio apartment uh, like funded by the state, mm -hmm. you know, and help them to try to come back into society. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's different ways you can do it. Mm -hmm. But th these societies I'm talking about, especially like a lot of Scandinavian ones are good examples, mm -hmm. uh, are closer to what I think 
would provide that kind of a springboard, yeah. you know, into in like if there was more of that in the world, and honestly, there's a difference there. They're providing for their own people far, far better. I think yeah. that's a good place to start. You well, know? lo and behold, I mean, certainly not in deep history. They were the Vikings. <laughs> sure, <but>, yeah. <laughs> uh, in more modern history, the past few hundred years, Scandinavia has held host to a lot of countries that, well, three, but uh, countries that have in a lot of situations found a way to maintain peace. Mm. Like, during during World War Two, like, one of the, uh, aside from notably Switzerland, like, one of the only holdout countries, and mostly just through thanks to its geography and good timing, but was able to hold out was Sweden. Right, yeah. And then Finland has been on this very <laughs> delicate line, actually sided with the Axis because of this. <laughs> Not well, they got attacked proud by Russia. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's the whole thing. They've been on this delicate line of trying to maintain this form of peace with Russia that they go way back with having problems with um, before World War, the recent World Wars we've had. But, like, the, this balance, and it's only now been disrupted with this whole push for them to join NATO. Right. Like, up until that point, they've remained neutral. They've tried to, like, use what l relatively little geographical distance they have from Europe and Russia mm -hmm. to try to be like, well, we're kind of on our own thing here. Mm, yeah. We're cool with the uh, three of us. Like, y'all need to kind of leave us alone. Right. <laughs> we don't really want to get entangled in this shit. Yeah. Like, um, but and the, sex, and, yeah. and the success that has happened with that has been pretty surprising. Yeah, yeah, like, sure. It's different for us to be able to say, well, we've got two oceans guarding us from all the shit in Europe and Asia. We <laughs> can kind of wash our hands of it and be a little more isolationist, whereas they're directly kind of tied into everything geographically. Yeah. Um, but these societies, though they've come from things like Vikings in the past, uh, have kind of culturally evolved, and I wonder how much of it's the chicken or the egg and causing the culture or the culture developing from it. Mm, but yeah. I could these places, away, really, but yeah, these places. And it's probably self-reinforcing, but these places yeah. are the ones that have been the most peaceful and found a way to thread the needle towards peace. Yeah, and these are the places where they have this culture that tries to develop on a just very base, localized level of hey, we're taking care of each other and helping each other in a very peaceful manner on an individual basis. Yeah. You know? And how how to start that cycle, I don't really know, but I mean if it came from Vikings, it clearly could come from us too. I think so, because of the modern culture, one of the things I've noticed about a lot of Scandinavian cultures to the degree, like Denmark's the only one I've visited mm -hmm. repetitively. I've, I've been to Sweden but only briefly. I, I have I roots there but I've never been there, so, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like it's it's really not a very hierarchical culture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they don't there's most people seem to have a sense of discomfort mm -hmm. about pushing people to do things too hard or too much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like there's jokes about it, like in Danish meetings at a company or something that everybody's just trying to spending, they waste a lot of extra time just trying not to step on anybody's toes. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, now that's so, a time waster I can get behind. Are you yeah, cool with me saying so yeah, that? Yeah, I just yeah, want to make sure. Are, yeah, are you? Are yeah, you good? Yeah, yeah. Are you good with that? I'm not trying to be rude. I just want yeah. that. There is an elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean but I would I think that is a cultural idea that is universally just about universally healthy you mm -hmm. know like I, I our, our our society is a bit more hierarchical than I think it should be. I'm sounding like an anarchist and I'm actually not mm -hmm. but uh, I, I'm, <laughs> well, I don't think you have to to be able to criticize our <laughs> our country's hierarchy, I don't think you have to go full to anarchist. Yeah, to so, <laughs> have problems uh, with. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I, but it, but it's like, but the reality is, and the, I will, uh, although I will give this concession that there is a real problem with having too much hierarchy. Yeah, you know, there's hierarchy. I know, and I'm not against all hierarchy, mm -hmm. uh, but I think too much of it leads to power and corruption. I also think that some hierarchies are inherently unjust you know yeah. like slavery was a hierarchical system that was unjust right? right and there's a lot of things today that you know like there's sexism and there's racism mm -hmm. that's unjust um but uh, at the same time like there are there are things you could call a hierarchy properly mm -hmm. that uh make a hell of a lot more sense mm -hmm. like imagine that i'm on a you know I, I just whatever i'm doing whatever job um, and I'm one of the most experienced people there, and I know it, and mm -hmm. somebody else is new, then I'm probably going to be more yeah. taking the lead and showing them how to do it. A know? true meritocracy. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, that, that, and it makes more sense, right? Like, yeah. you, like you, 
you are about to get your license, right? Mm -hmm. If there's a new electrician first day on the job, you're the guy, right? Mm -hmm. You know. But if there's another guy that maybe has 25 years of experience, you, you might be like, hey, I've never seen this, you know, right? Yeah. So, and that's just, that's how I operate, right? That's, that's, how, that's, the, way how, that's the way it is. Yeah. it is, right? And so, um, and that makes sense. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. against that hierarchy. Yeah. Uh, I'm against sort of a very, the very unmeritocratic hierarchy. It's like, how, how much money do you have? Right. You know? Yeah. And like, that's not really, a, they try to sell bullshit. Oh, it's only because you're so smart. Yeah, I'm smart enough to win the lucky sperm club and be born of, <laughs> you know, a, a yeah. friggin' rich family. But yeah. also, it's not just the inherited wealth either. It's like, there's so much of it that comes down to luck. Yeah. It's like, they focus on, oh, hard work. Right. People work their asses off in this country. Yeah. I have worked so damn hard packing a shovel before, wasn't going to get rich doing it. It's probably know? fair to say, in most cases, you don't become outrageously successful without hard work. However, hard work does not necessarily yeah. directly lead well, to outrageous yeah. success. Yeah. In fact, that's what's going to mean. Like, if you're not born into it, I think you almost certainly have to work hard. Yes. I agree with that. Yes. But the, my point is that hard work is very common. Yes. I can, I can, Absolutely. you can walk down Throw the street and just, yeah, yeah. You know, I can show you, like, I, I've known so many people, like my father, good God, like, it's not a father complex thing. He just works so damn hard and so much. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get to know him that much when I was young, right? And Scott, yeah. was, my brother Scott was the same way. You know, didn't ever make him rich. It wasn't yeah. that kind of industry, right? So you, part of it is like, yeah, you have to take certain risks, but you start studying some of these people that take the risks, and yeah. their their family gave them a small loan of, you know, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. and it's like, yeah, uh, there's a lot of us. Most of us don't get two hundred fifty thousand dollars, or you know what I mean, yeah. or whatever, to to do this, right? And so naturally, we're not going to provide. We're not going to have that springboard and success because the material elements matter yeah it's much much harder to get to that level of success uh out of um you know the lower lowest echelons and in fact if things were fair mm. for for movement in our country then you would expect 20 percent of the bottom 20 yes. percent to make it to the top 20 right but only 10 percent do right and i'm pretty sure a lot of them don't stay there i love the breakdown when you actually look at yeah. those numbers yeah. too um, to bring it back to Arcane for a oh, sorry. <laughs> no, we're, we're, that was good, and it's, uh, it actually dovetails really nicely into it, because again, Arcane has a lot of these, uh, It does, you thinking with, about that, yeah. Yeah, right. it's kind of hard to avoid these discussions, because it's such a stark, and I mean, so the thing is, like, you have these people in the lanes who are, like, ostensibly from the snapshots we get of these kind of background characters who are just incidentally involved, like, hardworking and, like, trying their best and, like, yep. making it work and, like, they're involved in things that you would expect in the lanes, but they're not necessarily not abiding by some sort of code, not trying to make the most out of things, not trying to make it work. But, like, you get that on the uh, side of Piltover 2, and it's just, it, it kind of lends itself to perpetuating this, this culture that it's already in, mm -hmm. you know, because, like, uh, kind of the reverse of what we were talking about earlier, the hard work, uh, it kind of like perpetuates the existing systems because it's hard to venture out on your own. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you like you get kind of snapped back. Like Jinx tries to venture out on her own and develop her own things, and her mm -hmm. monkey bomb fails and fails and fails, <laughs> and it succeeds. Oh, and everyone's dead. Yeah. Like and Jace tries to venture out on his own, literally gets fucking denied by the council. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> yeah, um, like you have these cases where people are trying to strike out and forge new ground, and it's difficult. So these background characters around them who are just kind of pushing on and trying to do their best, like, are succeeding, but in a way, like, Mel, like, we haven't seen a lot of her story yet, no. and I don't think we really get it super fleshed out throughout the rest of the series, but you can get a vibe of what's going on. And here, it's not surprising that through her own personal hard work and some stature that she was born into and able to acquire through luck and things like this, um, is somebody who, when we first start the series, is just on the council, and not really notably different. Has some general passive, aggressive... Snarkiness, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't really necessarily struck out on her own, and really tried to forge this new ground and taking these risks in the way that people like Jason are willing to do, or like Victor is willing to, you know? Um, and even Victor, who seemed... I would say probably the most readily available out of all of them to try to 
pushed these envelopes still wasn't the one who did it. Jace initiated it. He only was able to recognize through his more technical background, wow, this actually has legs. Right. Like, let's go. Yeah, about it, pun is unintended. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kane boy walking yeah, around. Yeah. Um, I could use one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is an interesting joke we will revisit next uh, episode of the podcast. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, I don't know. I just think there's a lot. It's hard not to talk about that stuff because it's so inherent in the show. And um, Central theme, really. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it just the entire aesthetic of the world is based... I mean, for all we see of Rune Terror is just these two cities right now. Mm -hmm. So the whole dichotomy is the world, you yeah. know? And it, a lot of the characters are based on that. And I mean, like, if you really think that the poor deserve to be poor or something, then what do you hate everybody in the lanes? Yeah, what? You know? Vander's not a good guy. He yeah, deserves it, better. His it, kids it, who, yeah. uh, who lost their parents in the war and were taken in by Vander and are trying their best and... You know, they're mischiev mischievous, they're out yeah, there, sure. you know, hooliganism. Yeah. But, like, they're trying. Like, right. Vi isn't a good kid. Right. Vi. Yeah. yeah. Like, so. she's learning the hard lessons, and Vander's doing his best to teach her. I mean, <laughs> she's not even her his kid, and he's really fucking, how do you tell a child <laughs> these yeah, things? Well, but, yeah, but he stepped up as a father figure, and he's yeah. doing his best. And, and she's really stuff. trying to take it into account, and really, like, <laughs> internalize it. Like, you see these moments where she, like, kind of pauses and has a deep breath, and is like, yeah, yeah. you're fucking right. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it, she eventually it definitely lands with her. If yeah. You can see that, like, and, and she's less... Warlike when it's like, oh wow, I don't want to, you know, lose yeah. people I love. I mean, but that is an inevitable risk, and a very serious one. So yeah, that's that's why the whole thing. That's why I mean, any most people are going to see people in the lanes, and yeah. ha at least care for some of them. I didn't dislike anybody there really, except for. Uh, Ooh, Silco. Thank you. I yeah. always forget these now. I was you will learn Shredet. Silco's yeah. name soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's sure. a major character. Yeah. yeah. So Silco, anyways. I mean, which he's definitely in the first three episodes. I should know it, but uh, but you know, how do I put this? He he really starts striking and heavy in episode three, in my opinion. Yes. Is where he starts to make Absolutely. a major impact and like the friggin' kidnapping and all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. but uh, so yeah. I mean, how do I put this? It's just really inhumane to not have some kind of empathy for the people that are living in the lanes, I think. Mm -hmm. you know, And I think that's a, a, a premise of the story. And people that likely, if a person was the kind of jackass that wouldn't feel empathy for anyone in the lanes, they're not going to like Arcane. Yeah, you know that's probably the, the truth. Yeah, they'd be like, "Why don't the enforcers just kill them all?" You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, dude. <laughs> you know. Because so, that fucking chief wouldn't let him. What a yeah, bitch. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so th this is like, and the ch thing of it is, this is another thing too, that general, let's say a concept here, mm -hmm. is that like you have these broader social forces, they act upon all of us, and you can't like choose those social forces. You can only try to choose what you're doing inside of those social forces, yeah. right? So if you're born to a ghetto, uh, and actually, okay, so looking at my own experience, because I lived in the ghetto for a few years, mm. hey, I'm Mr. Math, right? Not anymore, I'm old. <laughs> I, you can see me, I'm doing the math, because uh, I'm not practice. <laughs> but the truth is, when I went through college and took calculus problems, I got to a point with practice and my natural talent where I could just rattle out the answers without having to work out the work. Yeah. Without exaggeration, other engineering students, people that are engineers now, their yeah. jo jaws would drop and they'd be speechless like, like I didn't know that was humanly possible. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was my talent when I was young. Mm -hmm. It's gone now, but that, that was there. Um, when I was in the ghetto, I got terrible grades and including a in math. Yeah. You know, the, the strain and the stress was way too fucking much for me, and I didn't even, I couldn't focus on any of that. Yeah. You know, and it it it, it got better when I left, you know, uh, eventually we left, went to a better neighborhood, better school, but, like, your, your environment matters, you know, so it's like trying to make it out of the lanes is not a trivial thing. Right. You know, I mean, I think if I would have stayed in the ghetto my whole life, I wouldn't probably be an engineer now. Yeah. I mean, or at Probably least... Probably not. Yeah, or at least not that one. Yeah. Things were... Where I was at was really, really bad. Did I tell you I looked up the history on that? 
Mm. So I didn't know if I could trust my childhood memories if I just you know like made it worse than it was. Mm. So I eventually went through these newspapers and stuff, and there was a woman that lived in my neighborhood the whole time, and she said it's gotten a lot better because now you only hear the gunshots at night. Oh, you did tell of, me Oh, that. okay, during yeah. the day and night, right? Mm. And it's like, no, I'm not wrong. They were real. It was that bad, you know. Yeah. And so it was just a really bad time. It was a high crime time, you know, crime, violent crime goes yeah. up and down. It was, it was like. <laughs> peak crime after peak lead. <laughs> yeah, right. Shocker. <laughs> so, um, so th it it really matters. What mm. what resources you have to work with are absolutely critical. Even if you're talented, not to say that there aren't. And that, you know, it's funny. I knew other talented people there, mm. um, and their lives didn't turn out particularly great. Yeah. You know, some of them die in the explosion of a monkey bomb. Yeah, well, yeah. So, <laughs> so well, there's there's that, but I'm just thinking like, well, that's that's another dark story. But I mean, I'm not saying you can never make it out of there. I'm just saying it's it's you're gonna get less people out of that. It's Absolutely. not the same process. Absolutely. You know, it's not just your talent won't overcome that entirely. You yeah. know, it's like so you'll get you'll be disproportionately. And I noticed this in college as well. You disproportionately get people that come from families with, that are at least middle class. Yeah, and I felt more socially connected to people that came from more, uh, you know, poor third world countries mm -hmm. when I was in college, you know, just because I didn't, I related to them easier and better than, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you come from this fundamental premise of we made it out of somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Out of here. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of that. Um, anyways, yeah, sorry. Well, I, I to, digress. Your, to your point, there, when people come from these backgrounds and achieve greatness, a common comment people will say is, man, just imagine if that same person had come from a different background, how much more they could have provided and done. Because mm. they, they could have, if they had gone along the same trajectory, uh, that being a given, they could have done so much more because they wouldn't have had to spend all of this time just getting to square one. Yeah. Actually, I feel like some of the, one of the easiest things I had to do was to get through college. Yeah. Everything that came before that that really sucked. And I also didn't believe in myself enough to do it until a little bit later as well. Yeah. So I wasted some time there. Just yesterday you know? when I showed up to work, somebody was like, Hey, uh, uh, how are you doing? Are you, are you feeling good today and everything? And it's just like, Yeah, well, the hardest part's over. I'm here. <laughs> like, once I'm here, I can work. Work's easy. I just gotta <laughs> fucking get here. I gotta show up. It's hard to drag my ass out of bed. Like, fuck, hey, I'm gonna get here in the morning. All right, pound coffee, pound coffee. Yeah, I can, I can relate to it, actually, as far as, like, that is my hardest. Like, I, I remember, finally, I like my job. I had some jobs that I hated in life. Yeah. Especially when I was younger, man. Like, when I did, I, like, I did dog work and construction. You you have a good trade. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm carried a shovel some of the time. I did jackhammering sometimes. Well, I still carry a shovel. Yeah. Uh, rods. Oh, yeah. God. I, hate, I, hate, I don't like digging. Uh, yeah. Well, it can. it's not too bad if it's soft, but if it's hard clay and stuff, yeah. then it really sucks. And once you go to a certain depth, <clears throat> I'm no longer interested. Yeah. Oh, totally, <laughs> dude. Totally. No, you, I, can, you can have a <clears throat> good attitude and approach it from the right perspective and get a good workout in. Yeah. If I'm okay. doing it for over an hour... I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> we I, need to get a fucking ready to work or apprentice out here. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah, that's, just I don't blame you, dude. I hated it. When I had full days of doing it, I despised yeah. it. Yeah. I, the, actually, the worst day of digging I had wasn't the full day. It was maybe, I think it was around five hours. But <laughs> three guys, myself and two other guys, right? Yeah. And uh, did I tell you about this already? Or? I'm not sure. So, okay, we, we, we were the ready to work people or whatever. It was like mm -hmm. labor stuff or whatever, whatever I was working for at the time, you know, day work. Mm. And uh, it, they wanted us to dig these trenches, but it was packed with rocks and roots. Oh. So we were smacking off of it all the time, right? One of the three guys, he was a big, strong guy, not quite as tall as you, but just buffed to no end, right? Yeah. He looked like a bodybuilder, right? Yeah. And like, closer, I don't know, a few hours in, he just kind of stood up and said, this is about to kill me. You know, and I'm sitting here like, my thoughts are like, my thoughts are like, this guy's going to, you know, steamroll us, right? He's going to keep going. And yeah. and I, but no, uh, we're all dying, yeah. you know, and it's killing me too. I'm just like, this chink, you know, mm -hmm. conk, you know, just like in the wrist, you know, jamming yeah. my wrist all the time, trying to kick the damn thing. Is that the sound of yeah. the metal shovel hitting the uh, stone? 
Or is it the sound of my bone hitting my other bone? Yeah. Crack, crack, crack. So, yeah, it's work like that. And then it's yeah. like, hey, you really earned your minimum wage today, Eric. Yeah, right. Yeah. Somebody just kill me. <laughs> you know, like, I, I had some jobs that I hated. <laughs> hated with passion. So, uh, uh, now I actually like my job. So, that's, that's positive. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's nice to be somewhere here, actually. Like, I, let me uh, spin the conversation in a different direction. Here, yeah, yeah, I want to get your thoughts. One of the things <clears throat> that I've liked the most over time with Arcane is the music. Um, the score is just fucking killer. Upon re-watching these first three episodes in the sequence, um, there's some of my favorite tracks in them that are very downplayed. Like, mm. one of them... I think the best example is one that's emphasized by the show, per se, when you first are descending into the lanes after the heist and they lose it, Powder loses the hull, and they're descending down this, like, long, exaggerated elevator shaft. Uh, they play uh, Welcome to the Playground, mm -hmm. uh, which was, like, when the show was being teased to be released at Worlds, they had, like, one of the openings uh, was, like, they had built largely recreated that main thoroughfare you walk through mm -hmm. and then it had like cgi to the background buildings in um and it was sick they had the artist who did the song like walk through I, it next to by i can't match the scenes to the songs i know the music's quality um but i haven't i didn't go back through and watch it much less i didn't only watch it one time actually yeah uh, but i also like how do i put this it would be better if i focused on that because it was a secondary thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, this is it, it, one of the things that was... It didn't feel like it was... Like, there was that moment where it's like... The track is like a feature. Because nothing, no one's talking. It's just kind of cinematic <laughs> shots of the yeah. lens to introduce you. So the music's kind of large in that moment. But the show is so gorgeous. Like, this yep. French animation style they have. For so Chiche, good, I think yeah. is the name of the studio. Just gorgeous. Like, uh, yes, it is. They're not going yeah. for this photorealistic CG stuff. They're not <clears throat> trying to do classic anime style. They've got their own flavor. But man, does it just... It is hitting exactly what it's going for. It's it's so beautiful that I just watched it on my own and all that. I'm like, well, I should show this to Naomi. Because you know? it really is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I'm going to tip her off to it. You know, because I, I did that with Chainsaw Man. She loves mm. it. So, you know, oh, yes. uh, I think... <laughs> <laughs> no, we can do a whole other thing about Chainsaw Man. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Right, yeah. But, uh, but but so, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna tell her about it, and then maybe she'll catch up and give me some opinions. And like, but, So I should probably pay attention to the music again. I would say it's just because I was so bowled over by the visuals. Yes. You know, for anything like your t the screen you're talking about, I was like, wow, this is gorgeous. Just, 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 just radiates beauty. Yeah. You know, off the screen. So, like, okay, this is this is truly wonderful, and I just I suck that all in. And, in fact, that's like, how do I put this? I am not, like, a connoisseur of that style, mm -hmm. right? Right. Don't, don't care. It's absolutely excellent. Yes. Love it. Love it. When something yeah. is, like, a 10, everyone appreciates it. Whether yeah, yeah, no kidding, right? Whether or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's real. Well, also, you know, and, and to be, like, how do I open it? My perspective about... French art, right? Mm. I really enjoy it. I've mm. been to the Louvre and the Dorsey a few times. Um, I last time I went to Paris, I went to the Monet Museum for the first time. Um, a lot of great, beautiful artists come out of France. So here we go again. You're right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, next so, generation, up and coming. Yeah. Um, one of the things that had made me uh, got me to appreciate more of the songs that I hadn't noticed uh, just watching the show was just uh, around the show, so people make, like, AMVs or um, just, like, standalone tracks, like Riot released the entire soundtrack and stuff. Um, and just hearing it more over time, I came to grow to appreciate more of, like, the nuances. Like, we, we had talked about Otto. Like, what... Uh, but let me just pull up and give a shout out to Otto, by the way, because I just uh, still am in love with every song I hear by her. Um, <laughs> she, uh, we were talking about what I appreciate about her so much, and one of it is like the subtle nuances of like what she does with her voice, like kind of yeah. back to back. She'll shift from like this very classically beautiful, um, 
like it's like a lot of range in her voice, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From so, to like gritty, like but back to back, and she gives herself contrast to play off of. Very yeah. sick. Yeah, um, I think it is really it shows a hell of a lot of talent, and I appreciate it too. I like her gritty stuff the most. Yes, uh, me too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so I highly recommend you check her out if you don't already know her, but, uh, it's similar in this, like, the, once I, I'm listening to it more, there are these subtle, like, changes that people do with their voices, and, like, these moments, and there's some moments that I'll be interested in these upcoming episodes, if how hard the music hits you, Mm. um, because the visuals are also so striking in those moments, it's hard to want to talk about the music, but, like, it's it's just it's one of those things where it's everything in the show is done so fucking masterfully. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, also, I, I, I want to send you some of these things that emphasize the music more, and then get your uh, thoughts okay. on the music now, as well. I like music, but I'm a more visual than auditory person. Me too. So yeah. that's probably part of the reason why as well. But you telling me this will give me the chance to try to key in on it, and realistically, maybe just play it over and listen to like not look and just listen to the music, you know, mm-hmm. so I don't get lost in that. But. um Yes, so it's definitely that. Um, there is, so I'll, I'll let you know what I think. You know, right now I know it's quality, but I can't tell you, like, more than that. You know what I mean? Because I didn't, I didn't listen to it discreetly. Um, there's another topic on that. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is what I was going to make a point to you. I don't know that I will or will not play League of Legends at this time. I'm not, now I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm thinking about it is, like, uh, there have been video games that I've played before where when I'm playing at my absolute highest level of ability Hmm. it's because i'm emotionally invested yeah and the reason i think that happens is because i'm very very focused at that time Mm -hmm. right i'm extremely engaged and so i have like a hype like it's like my normal abilities and i think this happens to us generally right Mm -hmm. like if we're overly hyped up right and but in a very focused state so high energy but high control Mm -hmm. you know we can funnel that into like being really good at things generally right and so that happens sometimes when i'm like if i really love a character and i'm trying to protect them or you know something like that like it's a story i'm connected to the characters i care about them and it's like they are not gonna die here you know i'm like that disinvested and then i'm playing out of my mind right Right. like i'm playing my absolute best game yeah so if i come to love the characters that very much increases the chances that i will at least try it yeah. And then I have to see how much I like it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. That's a good question, you know, what the learning curve's like. But but if I walk away from this having a distinctive, this character is my, you know, like, my power spirit, or my spirit animal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if that's going to happen. So far, I simply like a lot of the people. Mm-hmm. But that's a good start. So we'll see where it goes. One thing I will say is, well, two things I'll say. So one, uh, the classic joke once Arcane was fully out, uh, and people were... Uh, like, kind of settling on this was great, <laughs> just killer. Uh, the joke uh, in the community became uh, the worst thing about Arcane is the fact that it makes people want to play League of Legends. <laughs> it's a very common meme in the League community to be like, I hate playing League. Le- League is such a shit game to experience. The community is such shit. And then, like, and as soon as you're out of game, the community is awesome. They make such great art and <laughs> such great shit around League. Like, Riot is such a killer company. Like, they care in so many ways they don't have to. <laughs> like, everything around the experience of the game is great. The esports scene, right. of watching people play playing League, I fucking hate this game. This game <laughs> hates me, everybody on my team hates me, and my enemies are laughing at the fact that my teammates hate me and I hate them. Like, <laughs> um, the other thing I is, ima- I, I want to show you, similar to how I did the uh, Vi and the Jinx music video, they oh, have sure. one for uh, Echo when he was first released uh, called Seconds, mm-hmm. and I want to show you that one after we're done uh, with, the, oh, we're not done yet, don't go to that screen. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine my first league game. I don't know if I can punch myself there. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'll get plenty of hazing. You know, uh, but the, the best thing about laugh, uh, <laughs> league, if you approach it from a uh, perspective of someone who's already played it, is that mm-hmm. you'll usually get directed to play against bots first. And the thing that's best about it is not that it's easier, though it is. Um, even like the lowest tier ranks are usually better than bots. Um, but it's that in bots, people just don't care. 
that you could feed your lane super hard and make the game unwinnable, even though it's bots. Hmm. People are okay with it. They don't really care. They might be a little bummed they're trying to get their daily quest thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. League's so generous with all their shit. There's not that much pressure about that. Oh. So even if the bot gang goes horribly wrong, people aren't really going to flame you. They're going to be like, ah, shit happens. Yeah, that really sucks. That character's crazy when they get fed like that. What are you going to do? Yeah. I will chain feed too. It's okay. <laughs> well, I got my practice in. <laughs> that's good because I... I, I I absolutely will use bots first because I don't want to screw up somebody's game just because I don't know the buttons. You know what right, I mean? Like, yeah. like, uh, hunt and pack. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what is he doing? Did he have a stroke? <laughs> uh. As we wind down here, um, I want to go into general like speculation and thoughts and predictions about what's coming up um, and things that have stood out that you think the show's going to go in that direction. Um, but, but before we do that, do you have any more just like kind of general things you wanted to talk about mm. from these first three episodes? We hit on most of it hard. There's a few just small points I would add in addition. Mm -hmm. uh, they start off in a really engaging way where things go to action fast and it's fun and yeah. it's fast-paced. And I think that's a nice way to kind of break me into it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you get to see the characters and their behavior. You know, you kind of get their personalities of the kids, you know, pretty quickly. So, in other words, it's a very low bar to entry to the Arcane animated series. There's some things that are really great, but they're on a low burn. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you have to go through that here. Like, it's so yeah. gorgeous, I would recommend it anyways, I think. But yeah. I don't have to worry about that, because it's going to take off like that, and you're going to get action, you're going to get interesting things, mm -hmm. you know. Um that's so good to hear. I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, think, I mean, I think really it's like something I could recommend to almost anyone. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to have the patience. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the story is very, I think the story is very relatable. It's not sophisticated enough to be hard to understand or approach. It's not serial experiments lane. Right. You know, but at the same time, there's enough depth there to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, and some age old kind of like concepts there. So I think this is, it's really selected really well to have a wide appeal. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so I expect it to be success. It's probably already been very successful. Yeah, and, pro and, probably, <laughs> and most people probably would be fine with, you know, checking it out for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say, and this is, I'm only through episode three at this point, so it's, it's hard to say. I'll have to say, but like, the way they set it up through episode three mm -hmm. is that there's a wide array of possibilities on how Jinx and Vi can interact. Mm. They could be fighting each other. They could eventually make up with each other. There's all kinds of things that could happen, mm -hmm. and it would be justified, you know, from or like from a story perspective. Like, mm -hmm. but it could lead into all these things. It could be a combination of all of them, yeah. you know. So, I like it. I like it for storytelling because uh, it gives a compelling and gripping action that's happened, right? And it still leaves me suspenseful, right? Because yeah. I don't know how this is going to turn out. At the end of this story, they could be bitter enemies or best friends. You know? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of hoping for the friend, and maybe it will be, but... I'm so glad that they went in the drama direction. Like, there's lots of action in the show, but, like... Oh, yeah. Man, the character-driven drama, like... League has always... Is, like, kind of an action-y game, just by the fact that it's a MOBA. But, like, their stories, they are such killer fucking writers and killer fucking, like, character designers. And as they've gotten into animation, they work with such great animators and people who can make these crazy scores for their music. Mm -hmm. And they put all that into Arcane. And they yeah. went in this direction to not be like, okay, we're not going to just make, like, some battle thing to try and, like, recreate the game. Like, we're just going to tell a killer story and we're going to put our best writers on this. We're going to get some of the, these people who we've worked with to make these killer cinematics. They're, we're going to bring more people into those studios and, like, kind of create a studio. The story of Fortiche has been kind of dope. Mm. But, like, to expand this identity we've developed and just do more of it. Mm. It's like, this is how I want this stuff to be developed. I want this talent to be recognized and built upon and to be developed further. And, like, uh, it's just... It could have gone in so many other directions. And, like, this whole character drama narrative... Like, if I had been asked before any 
like inklings about Arcane had even gone out. Like, what would a like movie or TV show about League? Because that's been talked about in the community ever mm-hmm. since they did their first cinematic. Okay. What would that be like? It's like. I don't know. I would have expected it to be more action oriented, just because most of their cinematics are more action oriented. But oh, this is so good. They did yeah. such a good job. <laughs> and yeah, I I really agree because even though the drama is excellent and the story is good and the characters are developed and they really developed well, mm-hmm. the action is still top notch. You know, yeah. I thought it was badass when Vi was boxing with those like steampunk gloves. Like yeah. you know, she's just, oh, there's more of that to come. She's, she's like <laughs> taking them all down. Yeah, like yeah. like. Next mother, <laughs> you know, just like the metal hitting flesh, you know. That uh, and I mean, this oh. is kind of spoiler e, but uh, I, as you can see, it's fucking on the wall behind me. <laughs> so she has a different kind of steampunk glove yeah. that she wears in game. Mm-hmm. But so I loved how that was like something that she kind of took inspiration from Vander. It wasn't necessarily uh, anything else about how she came upon that. Like, it goes all the way back to Vander. Sure. Okay. And, like, his yeah. struggle in the war, because that was his armament when they first met him on the bridge. He took those off. Right. And it's like, oh, man. Like, what a, like, subtle, like, development of, like, where that came from. Like, everything in the show, or in the character, is explained in the show. Right. Like, right, they took right. so much time to flush every detail out. And, like, it, it's the whole thing of, like, in good writing... Like, if you have a gun on the wall, it can't be mounted as a piece of art. Someone must be shot with it later. (laughs) Everything has to have a reason, or you shouldn't be wasting time describing it. Like, I love how they took that philosophy. Yeah, well, that is a really cool connection. I mean, (laughs) and I did, I already knew that from before, that that they're much bigger, burlier, you know, much, they're much more impressive. Yeah. But that was still a great scene. You know, I I thought that was really cool. Yeah, a um, killer moment for her. Yeah. She has a, a, another, uh, I mean, more than one, but, like, there's another particular scene that's very reminiscent of that scene mm-hmm. later on. Uh, I mean, there's just so many good scenes. It's like, it's one of my favorite. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love it, too. And Establisher is a badass for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, she already kind of had that, but, like, that was a brawling badass yeah. scene, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, she's the woman of fists, you know. Very, yes. Very, very cool. Yes, very much so. <laughs> I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on what uh, uh, your favorite uh, kind of action sequence is. Uh, yeah, you've seen well, and I, I want to see the develop with Jinx, too, because yes. she hasn't had that moment yet. She had her first breakthrough where she helped with the bombs, you know, tragedy, right? But what I mean is... Like you see that she's talented, that she's got she's a crack shot, yeah. you know. But I wonder how that's gonna play out in real hardcore action. Yeah, I will say too the moment when they're at the arcade thing and she just fucking puts Milo in his place yeah. and just <laughs> nails every shot. It's <laughs> like, wow, why are you fucking around with grenades, powder? Like, yeah, you need well, to fucking get a gun right well, now. Well, that's that's what I was actually thinking of myself. It's like you guys are not utilizing her correctly. Yeah, you it's missed not her fault. the fucking you, golden goose right now because yeah, you're like, oh, you can't make silver. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> who cares? Yeah. It's like she could be badass, you yeah. know. If you had, and it wouldn't even have to be like, okay, you don't want to kill people, but even if you want to have a non-lethal kind of a gun weapon for right. her, right? Something, you know, she could some gun, something. Because she's she's a freaking crack shot, dude. She yeah. can drop people. Yeah. You know, it's like before they even get to you, pop, pop, pop. You know. Uh, yeah. yeah, anyways. Uh, so, predictions, speculation, what is uh, calling out to you as far as the different storylines okay. we have? Let's see here. Um, well, okay, so I would say starting with Silco, whose name I can never remember, <laughs> um, I, I think he's a man on a mission. He's, mm. got, he's got a grudge and it's justifiable. Yeah. What he's doing is not justifiable, but his grudge is justifiable, is what I guess I'm saying. Like... Just as a slight aside, you probably know there have been experiments on primates, monkeys, apes, and stuff. Yes. We don't tolerate fair unfairness well, really well. Yeah. You know, just for the stream's sake, there was an experiment where they gave monkeys each grapes, and they were happy. They gave them each cucumbers, and they were happy. Mm-hmm. And then they gave one group grapes, and one group cucumbers, and they were pissed. The yeah. cucumber well, group, the cucumber group was pissed. The cucumber group was pissed. And they yeah. threw the cucumbers. Ah, you know, I like, need your fucking charity. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like it was not good. So go ahead. We primates are not geared up to deal with too much unfairness. There's all kinds of other experiments and uh, 
there's a mountain of evidence on this. But mm -hmm. I'll just say that, like, I get it, right? I sympathize with that kind of feeling. His methods I disagree with. But yeah. I don't really see any evidence yet that he's going to stop being brutal. To, yeah. You know, maybe he will, but so far, that's all I've seen. This is, yeah. uh, I'm going to be able to say this without a spoiler, very <clears throat> carefully here. Um, one of the uh, memes that came out uh, about, well, one of the, just the general discussions that came out after the show was about Silco and how people felt about Silco. Mm -hmm. And a meme that's been long standing is, X character did nothing wrong, right? right yeah, so yeah, people sure. were just taking that phraseology and putting Silco in it, and okay. I don't think anyone can really defend that he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> at this point, like there's points he'll just straight up murder people. And well, give a fuck. He I was gonna care. say he's Silco. People but, do that with like the worst people of history to be right to be a troll, right? right. You know, it's <laughs> so I I think though that the there is genuine discussion over Silco uh, was a good person. Silco uh, never did anything that couldn't be justified in a grand sense. Um, whether or not you agree with the ends justifying the means in any one particular case, mm -hmm. his character felt motivated in a very defensible way at all times. I, um, I, yeah, I would say so. Also, one, and I don't want to get, I'm not letting him off the hook, but yeah. when he was talking to Vander about it, he was talking about, like, okay, you're willing to, you know, you're not willing to fight for it. Yeah. You're willing, you know what I mean? Like, and I think he, saying that, I think Silco is willing to fight for it. Yeah. And I really do believe he's willing to take risks for it. Like, yeah. if he found out he was going to get pounded in the face, I don't think he'd stop. He'd be like, mm. no, okay, I'm going to have to take a pounding in the face, but I'm going to fucking find a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I see in the character. I at least respect that he's not just forcing other people into you know, a bad situation where, oh, no, d don't hurt me. You know, I don't think that's it. I think that's he's got a real vendetta. There's you know? definitely differences majorly, but it's got a similar kind of dynamic of Lelouch and Suzaku. Yeah, of, okay, yeah, and yeah. Soko and Vander. Like, there, there's valid criticisms from both direction about inaction or uh, perpetuating a broken system mm -hmm. versus how much you're willing to sacrifice. And when, when things don't go your way in Lelouch's case, because we've all seen that, no spoilers here, <laughs> um, there's moments where, like, at the stadium, where my favorite character, arguably from the show, Yuffie, becomes who Yuffie is. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> she, uh, the, the random uh, elderly woman in the stadium is, like, grasping to Lelouch, and she's like, you've got to save us now. And he's like, I have to carry this weight now, too. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you do when shit goes wrong? You just have to push forward and embrace it. Like at some time, at some point, it leaves your control, and now you have to operate in the new circumstances, even if they're circumstances of your own doing. Just because they were once of your doing doesn't mean you can change it now. Yeah. And it's like you get these hard situations where it's like Silco's a lot more, a lot less of uh, the grand kind of plannings and machinations like Lelouch's. Yeah, There's okay, definitely yeah. that happening. I believe for so. It seems like independence yeah. and stuff like this. But a, th a lot of the discussion is centered more around moral and emotional choices about like how he interacts with other characters. And it's like <clears throat> once certain situations were set up and scenarios were in place like could he have done better given who he is and what he had to go through? Hmm. Like Given that he's somebody who's been traumatized, you can't expect him to be lily white. <laughs> no, no. But, I mean, he's definitely still doing shit that's not really defensible. Mur he's just straight willing to murder people at some points. Yeah. But, like, is he a good person overall is kind of the discussion. And I think there's really rich discussion with his character about what it was he overall a good person, flawed or not. Yeah, and it's funny... This is my... I'm thinking of an anime assassination classroom. Can I spoil mm, yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So I'll spoil it. Uh, this principal of school is an absolute bastard to the students. He's like tormenting uh, the lowest class. Mm -hmm. And you learn to hate him because he's the worst of all bullies, right? Mm -hmm. Then you find out his history. <laughs> he had uh, a, a class that he loved when he was a teacher. And then he moved on to another place. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of his students was bullied to death, like bullied to suicide. You know, and it, it broke him. Was this assassination classroom? Yeah. 
That's not. What's the one where he has the? He's the alien with the yellow smiley face. That's it. Is that it? Yeah. Man, it's been a while since I've seen that. I forgot the detail. Fine. Yeah. Well, the you know the bastard principal. Yes. They do a back, uh, back flash or flashback uh, to where he was just a teacher mm. and he had just a small rural school. Oh, I think I remember and this. And then he, yeah. his student called him one time mm. and he just didn't have time or something or whatever. And then he was going by and he saw the picture out there. It was a funeral. It was like a, uh, not a funeral, exactly, but the, it was like similar to a funerary procession. Mm. And, you know, his, his student had killed himself. You know, and, and he wasn't and it, there for him. And yeah. It, yeah, and he wasn't there for him, and it broke him. Mm. And he swear he was going to make people tough. You know, he was yeah. like nothing. I said something. There was like a this there was like a line. Yeah, there was like a line where he said something close to like nothing. I teach anybody matters if they can't survive. You know. Yeah. You know. So very true. Okay, now is he doing the right thing? Hell no, he's a monster. <laughs> but I don't want to shoot him. I want to. You know. Yeah. He needs to be in a mental hospital. I want to shoot him with the. Love gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like I hated the dude, though. You know, like you yeah. bastard. You know, and then you know you get to his backstory, and like, oh no, wait, we need you to put you in the hospital. You do. Yeah. You're not. You're not a sociopath. You're a person that's severely traumatized. Yeah. And if that's the case for Soko, if I look at his history and say it's it's the trauma, not the you know what I mean, mm -hmm. uh, then all right, let's take forget revenge. Revenge is a foolish motive. Monster. Well, it's Newman. It's common, yeah. but it's not a good idea. Yeah. And so, like, I don't want to hurt Silco then. I want to get him out of that situation. I want to get him therapy. I want to get him help. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can't... I'm sorry, you're too dangerous to just let go right now. Yeah. But if we can rehabilitate you, then I want to. And I don't want to hurt you anymore. And, I, you know, I do want to work towards restitution to those who you have hurt. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand you need to do that. You know? But... You, that's a process, right? And you can't help everybody. You can't save everybody, but you can try. You can try. Yeah. And we should, you know. Anyway, so that's that's I guess would be my approach to Silco with those considerations. Mm -hmm. Even though mm, he's a little shaky right now, I I don't have a high opinion of him. Mm -hmm. The thing of it is like kidnapping children. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to come back from. <laughs> dude, dude, like I've been pretty pissed before, like. And I've been ready to do some things I'm not proud of. And I look right. back and said, that wasn't really cool. I never thought of that. You know what I mean? It was never, oh. I, I will say, Jesus. and I haven't thought about it in these terms until this discussion, but what is the opposite of kidnapping children? Adopting orphans? Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say free them. Interesting thought. But that's pretty close, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to also ask, uh, so Vi kind of left in this uh, precarious situation. Yes. Um, Victor and Jace are actually kind of on a high note right now with the success and being yeah, recognized yeah. by uh, Mel and to a lesser extent Heimerdinger for yeah. their success. Um, any thoughts on those two developments? Vi is kind of a mystery. Do you have any inkling of what's going to happen with her and being grabbed okay. up, snatched up? Well, okay, I don't know, but here's where I am. Uh, like, I don't really don't know, mm -hmm. but um, I think I see things working out a few different ways, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know for sure. I don't think she's going to be involved with Silco because that's an obvious like no go. You know, after mm -hmm. everything has happened, I think he's gonna. She's gonna want to be nowhere the hell near him. Yeah. You know, so she's running away from that. Um, I don't. I'm trying to think of. I don't know that she has anybody left that she's really super close to. Mm -hmm. You know, so she could try to stay inside the lanes and make a life there, but she might try to fucking run away from the lanes completely. It wouldn't surprise me if she went to. Pil Piltover. Piltover. Yeah, very good, very good. That's a very fancy name. <laughs> Piltover. Spilt over Piltover. Yeah, okay, anyways. <laughs> anyway, so Piltover. She, I'm not saying she will, and maybe she can't, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm open-minded to that possibility. Um, and so, like, considering... Well, how do I put this? I, I don't know where she'll wind up, but, like, after... After... Um, Vander died, mm -hmm. or, you know, what we saw there, right? Mm -hmm. And gave, but before he that... He seemed pretty dead. <laughs> yeah. You know. And then, if you go before that, all the, kind of the wisdom he handed down to her, mm -hmm. and now she's seen the, some death, right? Yeah. I don't think she's going to be game... I'd be surprised if she's game for a war between Piltover and the Lanes. Mm -hmm. You know? She could be. I don't know if she'd be down with that. Now. Interesting. You know? Yeah. If she... she 
they could write it that to where it doesn't feel like a violation. Sure. But I'm seeing all this anti-war stuff coming from Vander. Yeah. Vander dies. Not v- Vander dies because of Silco, not Piltover. If it was Piltover goons that killed Vander, then maybe she would. Yeah. Right. But that's not what happened. So. I don't know that she would be. She might even go to Piltover. I don't know because the reason I say that is if she's in. I don't know. I could be mm-hmm. wrong, but no connections. No one to protect her. Her friends are dead. Mm-hmm. You know. She might flee the lanes, you know, because Silco is there with all his goons, and that's not really healthy, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it, it shows she went to Piltover. Wouldn't surprise me. You know, and then, well, she, if she does, who would be her guardian, though? I don't see she has a contact there either. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure where she'll go. Could, uh, right now, I don't know. She could be either city. Mm-hmm. Um, and if she if she stays in the lane, she's probably going to go underground or try to, you know what I mean? Like, not, you know, I mean, almost has to. Because, mm-hmm. like, Silco would find her, you know, right? I mean, like, she she should be worried that Silco is going to find her a killer. Right. And she saw all those monstrous things, right? Yeah. So Marcus, like, I believe his name was the enforcer who grabbed her at the end, the <clears throat> apprentice enforcer. Well, not yeah. apprentice, but, like, second in command, now first, presumably. Um, well, maybe, okay, yeah, thank you. He, he, he stated that. Maybe he'll take her in. He was saving, saving <clears throat> her knowing that she would get killed by Silco, so I think yeah. it's fairly presumable she'd be hunted. Yeah. You know? So, well, I'm sorry, I, for, I, was, I forgot about that Peace, thank you for mm-hmm. reminding me. Uh, so, okay, with that piece reintroduced to me, um, maybe he'll take her in, you know? And she she could, if if he is a good custodian of her, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if he, if he is actually a, 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 a good father figure, good, you know, cares for her, then she might follow in his footsteps, you know? Yeah, it's an interesting uh, direction. And he, at, at that moment in time, the end of the mm-hmm. third episode, it's like... That really is kind of the only option that she really has. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I didn't put it together because I forgot about that piece. But it's like, God, the, like, the lanes are verboten, right? Mm-hmm. The only way to be there would be in the sewers. <laughs> right. right. right? So, I mean, but she's not above going into yeah. and throwing her yeah. pants at first. And, yeah. So, you know, maybe. So, but with that said, and especially with that, I guess. So, I'm guessing he'll be the guardian. Watch him. There could be anything, I don't know. I, I haven't read anything, I don't know. But For I'm, for a kick, we should go over this uh, last section before we do the next one and review these predictions. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> so, I, so I'm guessing he might he might be the guardian, he's my first guess, mm-hmm. and that she might follow in his footsteps. Sure. You know? Not right. to mention that there might be other influences in Piltover mm-hmm. that could come into our life. Piltover is a big city. Yeah. It's a big city, but also there's, you know, a wealth of potential character interactions, some mm-hmm. of them we already know, and perhaps, you know, mm-hmm. like, who, for all I know, those gloves that she gets could be hex, uh, what is it, hex magic, or hex, hex tech, hex tech. Yes. They could be hex tech gloves, you know. Sure. It, it with, you know, without new power, right, and like, badass. Just a thought, you mm-hmm. know. So she could be friends with Vander, for all I know. Mm-hmm. But, not that Her I'm friend, friends with Jace. Oh, sorry, Jace. I think she's friends with Vander. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't think there's much of a future in it. Yeah, no. right, yeah. <laughs> I will say, uh, one of the things is how traumatic the moment is for Jinx, and how uh, <clears throat> it, it literally does lead to the deaths of two, and essentially the death of Vander as well. Yeah. Uh, I had kind of, like, just overridden in my memory that it didn't kill Vander. Like, I had this whole sequence where Vander had saved Vi, and, like, well, that was the real he sacrifice. Well, dead to me, and straight was... up, but what you said kind of, like, cast a doubt on me, you know? Like, he looked dead. Well, no, 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 but I just mean in the moment after the initial explosion. Oh, Like, he has this oh, okay, moment where okay. he saves Vi, he chooses to, like, sacrifice himself to yeah. Silco's like murdering of him yeah like yeah, okay. the point on that that it was really truly Silco that killed him it wasn't the bomb it wasn't certain mm, it yeah. was Silco right like that uh, was a nice refresher for me to really okay. get that right. back in my mind of like no no this is Silco's fault well I agree with that and it, all those points make sense in addition, Silco set all this shit into, into motion. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's and not like Jinx set it into motion with her bomb. Jinx was responding to the whole thing with Silco. Yeah. This Basically, is all Silco's and, masterwork. And it's like at a base level, you got to understand if you're going to use violent and aggressive means, you shouldn't expect that from other people as yeah. well. 
it should be respected you know? back. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of he he set the shit in motion. He didn't do it just like innocent, innocently. You know? Oh so. my, I was just sitting here minding my own business with these kidnapped people. Yeah. <laughs> you came and blew up my place. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so. Uh, I'll, so anyway, any, uh, other predictions? Yes, uh, uh, Victor yeah. and uh, Jay smell Heimerdinger, that kind of dynamic. Any thoughts on where that's all going to go? Um, I haven't put any thought into it yet, but I would say that, uh, well, they have, they have a profound discovery. I don't mm -hmm. think that, so there's a future there. I don't think he's getting to be banished or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to be working together. The likely. genie is leaving the bottle before our eyes. Yeah, yeah. But I think like Victor and Jay seem to have uh, made a strong bond. Mm -hmm. And now Heimerdinger, Heimer, Heimerdinger. Yeah. <laughs> I suck with names. Yeah, Heimerdinger. Me too. But, uh, but I haven't known these characters for several years. So I wouldn't remember either. <laughs> yeah, but basically he said something towards the end of like, you know, by, you know, you actually did it, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, he it, it seems to be at least partly won over. Yeah. Or at least somewhat change on his position. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me to see that he has some level of involvement with it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that he might even even possibly wind up advocating for it. Mm -hmm. um, I can't I can't guarantee that yet. You know, uh, but once the genie's out of the bottle, you might as well do the best things you can with it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that's my first guess. If I was going to make a second guess, he could still stand in opposition to it if he's traumatized by the things of the past. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not my first guess. Not because of what he said at the end. He sounded like yeah. he was warming up to the idea. Yeah, yeah. I in uh, watching it again, uh, just being in the moment of watching it, uh, it felt like, to your point, of just like it, it was very brief, but he just like, I don't know, for Heimerdinger, uh, felt wide eyed in something that where his character had been like. I've seen it all. You don't understand. I've had lifetimes for mm. your scope. <laughs> yeah. And this is not wise. And he was like, well, I've learned something today. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It was like very different from the way his character had approached almost every situation up to that point of this like sage kind yeah. of wisdom. He was like, yeah. oh, whole things have changed. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, yeah. who knows where he comes from? That, but it definitely seemed like it opened up many possibilities for how he could go. I would say so. I mean, that's my impression, and I expect that he's going to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's my first guess. Yeah, he did yeah. find them breaking into his place after <laughs> yeah. and violating his stern warning. So we'll yeah. see how it yeah. goes. But yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That could be a bit of. <laughs> 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 what, I, yeah, it's like what the. <laughs> I mean, good work, but what the... <laughs> yeah. Uh, alrighty. So, uh, next episode we'll review, uh, and excuse me, I think we had mentioned this previously, but um, episodes uh, four to six is one release, seven to nine is one, but mm -hmm. the more major break is between three and four. Yes. Uh, and there, there is a good break between... Uh, six and seven, but, uh, why wait? So, okay. Um, I, I think we should just, uh, blast through the rest and then do a full series kind of reevaluation just like we did with Najee record. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. That shouldn't be a problem. I'm mm -hmm. ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And without further ado, we'll wrap this one up. I've got some minor editing patching this break together while I tried to piece this computer together. Um, hopefully next time we'll have the finally have the right hardware to be able to bring you this in 4k like i've been trying now um not that it really matters it's just our face but only the finest for my viewers um with that said i'm going to show uh, you the cinematic for echo yeah. seconds and cool. uh we will wrap the stream up so thank you all for watching and we'll see you on the next episode <laughs>